what's up? What's up? It's the art the most experienced with Deke. I'm Art the most, and that's my main man, Deke. What's good, bro? Man, life is good. Life is great. Can't complain. Feel electric. Yes. Great morning so far, bro. Not so much for me. No, man, you're elite this morning, bro. I don't want to hear it, bro. Everything is great this morning. There is nothing that could be negative about this morning, bro. I'm on top of the world. It feels great. We was bumping a little Drake. Lemon sure. pepper freestyle was it. Oh, I've been trying, trying, trying. Oh, it just hit, you know? Reminding about the concert. I was like, yo, it just, ah. Oh. And then I'm like, I ain't seen you in a minute. Yeah. Ah, oh, got my dog in the building. I got a little bit of a tan going over here. I'm like, you know. I see that. Feeling, feeling good. Feel, you trying to say? You trying to say I got darker? <laughs> Don't play. <laughs> It just feels good, bro. Just, just as I would yeah, if so, I went yeah, to the beach, yeah. right? It's a good day, bro. It's a good day. We, we got a wake and bake going on right now, but not too early. Shout out to the West Coast. You know, you ain't. it ain't a 6 a.m. or 6.30. It's a 7.15-ish. So salute to that, right? It's little things, little things. Yeah, man. But I'm feeling great, man. Okay, then. I'm not going to bring down the vibes nah, and complain, bro. To, complain uh, about everything you got wrong a, that happened this listen, morning. You got a fire t-shirt on. I like your fire t-shirt. I went with, with, with OG right here, the worm, Mr. Dennis Rodman, one of my guy guys, you know. It was just, you always look fire. El Moranish says, love the worm team, Ouch. I, salute you. Salute. Listen, in my mind, some days, you know how he would like tie his hair? Because like growing up, that was like my era. Man, there was plenty of times I wouldn't do some of that crazy stuff in my hair, bro. But my folks was not having that in the least bit. But I'd be like, man, I kind of like that he would get after that thing, man. Shout out to the worm, though. That was brought up every once in a while, early in the podcast days, yeah. about some type of bet. Uh -huh. You'd have to like dye your hair pink or blue yeah. or something, right? Well, that's different now as an adult. Yeah, we ain't doing that now as an adult. No. Yeah, you said you no, could. No, no, you no, were no. blaming the wife. I don't. Yeah. Is that the same well, case right now? Well, it's not necessarily the wife. It's more so the other, uh, the other job. The right. other job, yeah. I, I They're not that. going for that too, too much. Yeah. Because they're... It's not... A hard appearance thing, but it's definitely an appearance clause in the contract. And you're just like, I got you. I, now, you I, I know what? what you're saying. Yeah. There, there might be a loophole here. Now, I do think okay. they would be upset if you went with red or blue. But if you went oh, with wow. yellow <laughs> and threw in some, like, <sighs> you know, red and blue diamonds or the, something the, on the side. The problem is I would have to, like, make that my <laughs> new normal. And that is not a new normal look right there. That's a very, like aggressive look man so yeah I, I couldn't go with that one can't go with that one. i don't think they would mind that much <laughs> yeah but uh shout out shout out to the, to the to the good hair folk out there though man but yeah man shoot it's a friday bro we never are in here on fridays bro so it's got a little og vibe going on right here like i said it is in the morning time so we definitely enjoying that and um we do got plenty that we got to talk about man i thought that it was gonna be a quiet week away I'm like, man, everybody talking about everything right now, man. We got some additions to the coaching staff. Definitely got to talk about some of them cats, man. And then, of course, new QB rumors. All right, is that guy? Is it this guy? I'm like, oh, all right, all right. I missed this one. Let me holler back. Terry me... Bradshaw had some takes. I saw that, too. That's why I was like, you know what? Let me, let me. I fresh off the flight, I'm texting Deke. Yo, bro, like, man, we, we in there, bro. All right, this is what we're going to go with Just for the top row. We said, all right, let's do it. It seems like me, yeah. TB12, and John Easton are the only ones out here staying consistent. I think that's about it, bro. I think that's about it. Everybody else is like, oh. Sh and I'm even borderline on that. I don't even know if I belong on that list because of my support for Mason recently. <laughs> Either way, bro. Either way, it's going to be a vibe. And I can't wait for us to, like I said, man, talk about it, bro. But yeah, man, life's been good, man. So um, let me let me do some housekeeping because we did have some housekeeping we had to do. Okay. So if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly. Shout out to Beach Boy Molly, okay? Beach Boy, uh, Beach Boy Molly, he won the uh, giveaway. Shout out to the Steelers giveaway that uh, was announced yesterday, man. We're in terms of the uh, book, the terrible towel signed by the boy and uh, the picture as well, man. So switch you on that. Make sure you send an email to moatswinners at gmail.com so that we can get that uh, communication going, get everything sent out there to you. All right. Salute you on that. We also talked about the giveaway that was on the shoe channel, kicking it with moats. That's still going on as well, man. For those Air Jordan 1 mid uh, Magic Embers, all right? That giveaway will be announced on my birthday, March 14th, okay? So don't forget that. And then um, we also dropped a solo vid, man, before I left. 
doing a uh, conversation with uh, some of the kids over at South Fayette for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. So a lot of y'all checking that out, man. Definitely appreciate y'all, man, supporting them. If y'all are still interested in supporting them, you can still do that. You got time. That ends uh, March 22nd. All right. So that video is up and it's also a link in the community page. So make sure y'all check that out as well. And uh, yeah, I think that was all the housekeeping I was supposed to get on the front end of this thing, Deke. Make sure I checked all my boxes. All right. Think I'm good. Feel like I got it all. All right. Now we can get ratchet. Okay. All right. So, you got a deep thought today? It is. We still got some black history uh, in our months. Just, just know we still got some, <laughs> there's still some, some, some available history months. There's this black, you still got some yeah. days, bro. We've got a bonus day. I'm just, I'm just, ah. Yeah. It's, ah. Uh, I think the ah. <laughs> recording on Friday ah. threw me off on that a little bit. <laughs> Deke said, yeah, see, um. Oh. I do have some thoughts. <laughs> I do have thoughts about a lot of things we haven't recorded in like a Respect. week. Well, you, you know, what? All right, we, get, get, just give me a deep thought. Let me get deep thought, deep thought, deep thought. Here we go. Here you know we go. Here we go. We'll Here we go. Stick with Here we go. the positive vibes for today's show. Okay. Respect. Respect. We'll stick with the positive vibes because I mean, there's some. <laughs> Hot takes I could be throwing out there, some negative Let's, takes, just deep, some ranting for deep. sure. You know, for sure. I'm down for any and everything, man. I haven't seen you in a week, and then we obviously know next week is going to be another choppy schedule. Um, just an update for you guys since y'all up here early, y'all get to hear it first. I will be at the combine all of next week, okay? Doing uh my Steelers radio show out there, but you know, I'm gonna definitely get y'all some content as well, man. Get y'all some behind the scenes of what's happening over there. See who we bump into, talk to some important people, see if we get some information, all right? But definitely, definitely, like I said, man. So, yeah, man, we're gonna have time, but yeah, man, get, you gotta get it off your chest today, man. Whatever you got, man, drop that thing, all right? Like I said, this is more on the lighter side. <laughs> Just more of a tip of the cap. Okay, okay, here we go. We all know the Kelsey family, right? I mean, how could you not? They're like the first family of football right now. Them and the Mahoneses. It's like the Clintons and the Bushes, bro, and the Kennedys. They, I mean, they're pretty important families in terms of the NFL, man. Everybody knows them. Are Mannings the OG? Yes. Kelsey's are Man the hot ones now. Ma though. Mannings are the Bushes. Maybe that'd be. Maybe that's a better analogy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the Kelsey family, they're hot right now. Everyone yeah. knows about them. Mm -hmm. One of the uh, ones of the family that doesn't get talked about too often, because uh -oh. obviously you have Travis and Jason being NFL players, yeah. is Jason's wife, Kylie Kelsey. She's uh -huh. brought up here and there, but there was huh. one thing that I saw over the last like week or so that okay. re I, I really gained a ton of respect for her, because she's like me. She grew up an Eagles fan. Her whole okay. life. Did you see this? No, I've missed this, Grew up bro. an Eagles fan the whole time. Uh-huh. And will refuse to wear anything other than Eagles gear. I love her. I love that. Even That's if Jason fire. was traded, she said she, she said, would. I'm only wearing she, my stuff. Yeah, yeah, she would wear Kelsey stuff. She would not yeah. wear, say, Jason oh, no, was no, no. traded to, like, the Carolina yeah. Panthers. She, she would not wear she Carolina says, Panthers. She's a fan of her husband. She's not a fan of that team. So, I get exactly for this whole saying. Chiefs yeah. run, if you haven't noticed, like, Jason and you know yeah, that he side of the family that they're, they're going to they the box the, uh -huh. supporting Travis. She doesn't wear any Chiefs gear. Mm, that is actually really interesting, bro. I respect it because I that's that. I've said yeah. I, I think that's how I would be. I could definitely see that, bro. <laughs> Just you, absolutely stubborn. You, 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 the only person that I feel like reminds me of that is my uncle, my uncle Daryl. Shout out to Uncle D. He's the one who made me the football like diehard growing up. He's the cowboy fan, bro. He's the one who has like the cowboy shrine. The only time I've ever seen him put on anything other than a cowboy something was for me when I played with the Buffalo Bills and I flew him out the first time. You forced I, him. Yeah, I forced him. It was the first time. He would time. have worn the cowboy stuff. He right? was, bro, he was almost <laughs> in tears. <laughs> When I tell you my Uncle D <laughs> loves the Cowboys, like, when he goes, whenever that is, oh, it's a long, long time from now, but when he goes, he's the one that's like, bro, if you don't put me in that Cowboys box with the Cowboys covers, with the Cowboys slippers, the Cowboy tie, with the Cowboy hat, you feel me? Like, with the Cowboy sneakers and the Cowboy socks and the Cowboy jar, like, he's on that, you feel me? So, literally, he's like, man, the first time I get a chance to finally go to Jerry's World, down in Dallas, he's like, I got to wear bills. He was like, man, I wanted to cry, but he was like, it's because it was you. He was like, because it was you, 
And because you were the fly me out here, you made this possible. He's like, man, I did it. He was like, you know, I had I had that Cowboys underneath, but man. <laughs> he was like, every time he said, yo, I had the Cowboys underneath me. He said, you don't know how bad it hurt. He said, I'm standing back there in the players area waiting on you. And I'm seeing all my legends walk by. Michael Irvin. He's like, man, I can't go over to him and say, man, I love you. I'm a big fan of this Bills jersey. He said, I see Jerry Jones drive over by. He said, man, I can't go over there and say nothing to Jerry. I got this Bills stuff. He's like, yeah, it just hurt me so bad. But he was like, but because of you, I was, I was able so to be close. here, though. Yeah. Yeah, so far away at the same yeah. time. Because so I was like, I get it, bro. I get it. Yeah. Because that's for a fact. That's the only time I've ever seen him in any other, like, outside of Cowboys top to bottom, bro. Yeah crazy yeah so i've said the same thing many times on this podcast even if i had a family member no. or whoever in the league i still think uh I, I would just rock steeler gear i wouldn't rock their jersey or yeah. <laughs> whatever team they're affiliated with oh that's crazy bro and yeah i love it though that's the, I, that's I, I didn't know if i should feel bad about that because no, your reaction has made me feel bad about that at times saying like Dude, oh, you, no. you don't get it if you have a kid i feel no, like you're you're no. You you would be supporting them I'm like yeah I, I feel like I would still be supporting if I'm there in person right yeah. but Kylie Kelsey made me feel really good about no, she was fire that's fire that's that's fire I, that's a mentor right there that's yeah. someone to look up to no because literally my uncle stopped coming to like away games he's like bro I'm not gonna do that <laughs> <laughs> so your uncle <laughs> yeah, yeah. me your uncle, Love uncle and bro. Yeah. Kylie Kelsey yeah I'd be like are you trying to go back to Dallas but full of Just, no I ain't doing that with you uh uh-uh. <laughs> I ain't doing that <laughs> he's like, I don't want to travel like that no more. <laughs> So it probably but, hurt him. Bro, like when it I tell you. It was supposed to be a positive experience, listen, but that Bill's jersey listen, brought him down. <laughs> till this day, I could call Uncle right now. We talk about this story right now, bro. He will have us in tears because that's how he's, <laughs> man, he's like, yo, you start to stand, man. Just watching these guys walk by. I'm like, oh, I know this guy. Oh, I can't sound a dog fan. I got Bill's. He's talking about Bill's gear. He's <laughs> like, but it's my nephew, but ah, oh, it's Bill's gear. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. And you know, Cowboys fans, they got like the crazy pride, bro. Like, they're the most. It's cowboy fans. Like, just yeah, everybody know them, bro. He the guy. He got the stars all on his car. You feel me? Like everybody knows that he got when it's game. He got the flags. He drive around. You like, bro? You're in Virginia. Why are we driving to Walmart with cowboy flags on the front and the back seat? Like, bro, we ain't got just the front. It's like front and the back seat. Like they like you the president. Yeah, got the big big star. You're like, yo, you got a big whip. You got the big old. You know what I mean? Bow. Yeah. But shout out, bro. That's yeah. great. Yeah, man. That's, but, uh, that's a good start to show them. Uh, without a doubt. And uh, Tito Good Vibes, yes, yes, that is the uncle that I was talking about in my book. Uh, shout out to you for catching that right there. Yes, that is true. And Skeeter Joe's, yeah, I did break his heart, man. It, it was a rough one for him, man. He still loves me, though. He still loves me because he's like, yo, you gave me that experience. Like, it was great to be there. He's like, I had the best seats. Like, everything it was just amazing. I low-key feel like he was happy, too, because the Cowboys beat the heck out of us that day and Romo cooked. So I do feel like he was enjoying that part a little bit too much. But either way, either way, it was a vibe, man. Yeah. What? Just uh, start oh. shouting these people out? Well, actually, before we even get to that, I did also uh, see somebody bring up <laughs> Scotty Pippen and the Bulls going on the No Bull Tour. Did you see that, bro? No. A, a, a part of your deep thoughts. Um, I think, Rod, uh, was it Rod? No, no, no. It wasn't Rod yeah, Dollar. Throw it in. Yeah, I think it might have been Rod Dollar. Bro, that's what she said, too. I think that was Rod Dollar who brought it up, but... um. Yeah, he said uh, he was asking how do we feel about the Chicago Bulls. No, uh, Scotty Pippen is called No Bull Tour. Basically, they're going against the uh, the last or the. Uh, it's a documentary. The, yeah, yeah, they're doing like a documentary tour, going against MJ's uh, the final dance joint or the last dance. Yeah, they're just gonna debunk it or something. Yeah, because they're basically like they felt like the way that he was. So they're doing this live. Yeah, it's like a book tour. No, it's like a live. Vi- like, bro, I've seen. Little clips of because obviously you know I was gone. It's not gonna be like a ten part or anything. It's just gonna. Be I don't like know how long hour, it's gonna be. Hours. Yeah, I don't okay. know how long it's gonna be. But you're seeing them like in different cities and settings, like already shooting little like videos of it. Oh, and my. yeah, it's Pippin. It was what it was Pippin. I think Horace Grant and wow, uh, Luke Longley. I think it was Luke Longley was the other guy. Luke Longley. Yeah, bro. But they were basically saying um, <laughs> yeah. So Stan Clear was like, yo, they, they they try to you know give out all the info and stuff like that, man. So. They basically don't agree with how MJ was depicting them in the documentary. So they're just defending themselves. Basically, they're not yeah. be putting down MJ, but that but might be a part of it. But certain things that is going to be putting him right. down when Naturally. they describe how they their perspective of certain things was. Because obviously, you know, when you shoot a documentary, it's going to make you look great because it's your documentary. 
So I'm sure for some of them, they weren't as, you know, happy with how they were depicted at times. And I mean, we already knew Scottie Pippen had hollered about it before even when it first released. But it's just crazy yeah. to see like multiple dudes now hopping on with it to go against. I'm like, bro, y'all playing a, a, a bad game, man. You're not going to win this one. No, you're definitely You're not, not. going to win this one, bro. Yeah, it's almost yeah. Mendenhall-esque. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're going against the guy. You can't go against the guy, bro. The guy's credit is still A1. Like, when you're going, nah, that's chalk that up, man. Yeah. And you won with them, too. That's bro. the other thing. Like, the bro. Mendenhall, like, we never, yeah. I guess technically he did win a Super Bowl when we won Super Bowl 43, yeah. but he wasn't really a part of it like that. Like, Pippen won six with yeah, Jordan, bro. and there's no negativity really nah. subvol- re- revolving his play or what he did yeah. in the playoffs or what he did for the Bulls, right? Yeah. I guess, yeah, I guess Jordan just depicts him in a way that he doesn't like. Well, the people hit him with, you know, he's bitter about the money stuff. And that's another That's still part it, of it then, too? That's still I'm sure it. it's a, it, it ain't a small part of it. I don't, I don't think so. He's a Hall of Famer. Michael Jordan's a billionaire. I'm sure to an extent that, you know, he feels some type of something. Yeah, he's got the Jordan brand. Yeah. Pippen doesn't have that, obviously. Yeah. And all the Pippen is always attached to is Robin. You're always the Robin. Right? Well, it's true. Like, it is true. I, the other truth is Jordan didn't win whenever Pippen wasn't there and he didn't have that team right. around him. Like, he, you, you do need a legit team. But and technically, Pippen took a team by himself to the Eastern Conference Finals also. Yeah. Yeah. But you saw what happened when there is Jordan. There. Right. Like, but that's when you put them together. It's like, yo, Jordan is Jordan for a reason. So that was my thing. It's like, it's weird, but it kind of, like, it would, to me, would come off as if A.B., you know, if he was going at seven. It's like, man, it's just a weird dynamic because, yes, excuse me, you're great, which you did. But at the same time, we know this was the biggest part of your being successful because he has to deliver that to you. He still has to show up. Kind of like when we talk Jordan, it's like, Pippen, you're great. But Jordan, man, you yeah, take you're probably not even to, right. Pippen. Uh, on, yeah, if you're on it another just organization, takes you to another level. If you got a guy like that now for AB, his rebuttal is when he left, he ended up with the Tom Brady. Tom Brady, that's how people view him. You know what I mean? So it's like, yo, when you was matched with that, you were straight. If you ain't matched with that, we see what it looked like. To an extent, with Pippen, it's like, bro, we seen when you, when you was out him. You know, you had your year without him, but then Portland kind of got weird. Yeah. Yeah, that's just that's strange. You think this is happening if uh, MJ's son isn't getting with uh, Larsa Pippen? No, I thought they just split up, <laughs> they right? Did. They did. I thought they. I did catch that on, on on my when I was on the beach. I was like, you know what? Let me just get some ratchet because is there any hope for love anymore, bro? Bro, as I as I was sitting out, they there, they were engaged man, too. They was wholly engaged. Mm-hmm. I was sitting there holding wifey's hand. I'm like, bae. <laughs> Are they goals now? I, I don't know. She's like, nah, you don't want to be done. They just split up. I'm like, what you mean? Already? She's like, yeah, it's, it's over. She showed me the link on TMs. I'm like, dang. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I thought they was going to defy the odds, you know? Yeah, I, I thought they'd at least get married and maybe split up after a year uh, of that. I, yeah, I was like, yo, this is just a, a weird situation altogether. But salute them for giving it a go. Salute them. All right? Shout out to love. I think there were reports out there that he was going to have... Michael Jordan be his best man. Hey, yo, you got to stop playing, I think there bro. were reports out there. Hey, that hey that listen, happened. you got to you got to all the way stop playing, bro. All right. Let's, let's, I'm being dead serious. Yeah, yeah. You, I saw some you reports. You might as well just there. stop playing, bro. Just why are we even playing these games, bro? Why are you playing these games? Stop playing these games. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. Uh, I can show you after the show. Like said, stop playing these games, man. <laughs> this is your what? <laughs> I'm being serious. Like, hey, Dad, you would absolutely not. Wow. I, will, I think I he said he would have. Bro, they wild. I they got to show you the reports. They wild. <laughs> But you know what? That's a whole that, that whole situation was just hi, hey. yeah. That's what I just said. You know, I'm glad I ain't dealing with that. That ain't that ain't for me. That ain't my situation. So yeah. But uh, vibing out though, man. Like you said, so shout out to the No Bull uh, tour. We'll see what you know details come out of this or what updates we get from that. With uh, shout out to Scotty, Horace, and uh, Luke Longley, man. Shout out to I didn't even realize. Look, I was like, well, Luke, how you in this group, bro? Man, you had beef with MJ? Hey. <laughs> yeah, I could sense it a little bit from obviously Pepin, but also well, Horace, Grant yeah, from Horace the Last has Dance documentary. Yeah. But then, yeah, Luke Longley, he's just like out of Luke, nowhere. Like, I thought he was an innocent bystander. Luke, what you was doing over there, Luke? You had smoke. I thought Steve Kerr was the one who had the, had the issue. Not, that's you. Yeah. But all right. Anywho, anywho. 
Stand clear. Why you gotta say that? That boy said father and son go play tag before the breakup. Jeez Louise. Oh man. All right. Well, we was at least 20 minutes in, so at least I'm outside of the 10 minute mark. All right, blame it on the wake. Okay, it's the wakey time. Y'all know how I go. <sighs> so with that being the case, if you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Already. Shout out to the deep thoughts. Let's get it going. Let's get it going. So drop it in the comment section where you are tuning in from, and we will give you those big boy shout outs to start today's show. And of course, don't forget to hit that like button one time for the culture and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Nick Y, tuning in from 918, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Shout out to Nick Y, man. It's been a, it's been a little while, man. Caught you on the live now, man. Missed you over there, bro. Absolutely. Oh, and um, while y'all are getting the uh locations and stuff like that, where y'all tuning in from, mock draft people, all right? It is that time. So go ahead, start sending in your mock drafts, man. Start sending in player prospects, stuff like that, man, too. Motes at gmail.com, all right? Motes winners at gmail.com now we've been using what was the uh, pff mock draft similar that's the one we've used in the past so i know that's the one i'm gonna go back with but uh yeah man start sending that stuff in man get them player prospects in like we said man combines next week so let me get some eyes on some of these cats anywho all right but yeah definitely start sending those in moats winners at gmail.com jaren ps4l from the 559 Visalia, California. Shout out to Visalia, baby. Let's ride. Tito Good Vibes, the 817, Fort Worth, Texas. Funky shout town. out, shout out. Leah Warren, the 254, having breakfast with the gals. Man, shout out to the ladies then. What up, Leah? Hopefully, it's, is it mimosa time over there? Because, yeah, it's clean, Texas. It's about an hour. It's about an hour. So, yeah, it's a little brunch time. A little mimosa. Uh, yeah, if, you, yeah, if you're going to yeah. drink in the morning, I think Gotta it's, have a, it's mimosa. a mimosa. You gotta have a mimosa. Maybe, maybe something with uh, tequila in it. Yeah. Champagne eggs, Benedict. That's what Drake said. I'm gonna tell you, bro, I've been on Drake vibes since the concert, bro. I, tch, he rekindled the fire in me, man. Yeah. Certified level voice back in the building, man. I'm trying to tell you, bro. It's been Drake on Drake on Drake on Drake. J. Cole, Dirt, Drake on Drake on Drake on Drake on Drake. Perfect for the vacay, bro. Yeah, it's a good way to start your vacation. Man, man. I saw that. Yeah, I didn't. I thought you were, I thought you were leaving. I forgot. I can't remember if you mentioned me you had the concert or not. I thought you were leaving thursday no yeah so we were concert friday then flew out sunday morning uh, okay yeah so i had a little you know a little boom 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 a little recovery day in between yeah concert was fire though death was fire uh kenneth moses 757 salute from virginia beach the crew deke the og tb12 endorses kpa thoughts big facts we'll we talk about we it. definitely gonna talk that and definitely i'm not surprised either based off what he's said in the past True. Uh, CJ Allen tuning in from chemistry class. Hey, I like it, man. He getting a little entertainment and education at the same time. At the same time. Respect to you on that, man. Mike Hood, 614 Columbus. Shout out, shout out to Columbus, baby. Rod Dollars, Southside, 330, Young Santa Ohio. Mm -hmm, man, let me tap in real quick because I got Chewy Regal. In the 910, Swansboro, North Carolina. The Robode or the Robody in the 469, Dallas, Texas. He draped up, he dripped out. No, what a time about shot up and screwed. I'm sorry, it's one of them days. Benny Guavo in the 856, New Jersey, watching from work. Salute you, baby. I like it. Entertainment and stacking that paper. Big time respect to you, baby. No way I'm in the 613 Ottawa, Canada. And he says, hashtag draft Nate Wiggins. All right. Duly noted. Duly noted. And uh, simply, my man Mano just hitting us with the top of the morning, my good brothers. Well, top of the morning to you as well. And John Garrett, we will end it with you. Simply saying good morning from South Zoo, Pittsburgh, PA. I think I said that right. Hope I said that right. And I see you also, Paris in the 757 Norview. Shout out to Norview, Norfolk VA. One time for the crib, baby. Yeah. Little Norview action, man. I said like Norview Pilots. Now that I think about a little high school over there. Heck yeah. All right. All right. Respect, respect. And, and Jacob, that's a terrible question. No, he did not perform the leak. And I'm, I'm glad he did not. There's women and children there. And I was there. Now I didn't see any of that. All right. We ain't going for all that. But shout out. It was a dope concert. It was a fire concert. <laughs> uh, what do we start with? 
man, shoot, let's hit them with the supers, bro. You know how it is, man. Ten, man, we in the morning time, date. It feel good in the morning time, baby. Dondre Zell, who's more likely to get traded due to contract or things not going well at the beginning of the season? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Actually, actually, we had something came in before. Oh, whoa, this was like two in the morning. Never mind. All right, you read your first one, read that okay. one again, and then I will come back and hit these other ones that was earlier. All right, to put it uh, shortly, who's getting traded at the beginning of the season? Who's more likely to get traded at the beginning of the season, Najee or Deontay? Mm-hmm. Either for contract or things not going well. Mm-hmm. Najee. Uh, I, yeah, Najee, I'd say. This is the thing. I want to say Najee, but I think Deontay has more value. I well, think he would get more interest on the market. I don't know what, in terms of like trade and Najee, what you're going to get back on. I think it depends, too, on what we do with Najee this offseason. If we give him an extension, I think it makes it less likely. Right. But because with Deontay, he's only got this year left on his contract. Right. And if we don't extend him, then you're not trading for him on the final year of that deal. I mean, you could. It would be like the yeah. rental thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Signing, yeah. Yeah, if a team is in need of a receiver, someone goes down early in the season, they need a you know top twenty, a top twenty five guy in there. Yeah, yeah, I think Deontay would have trade value. Ah, man, I yeah, it depends on what we do with Najee. Yeah, yeah my knee jerk is Najee just more because of the running back position being yeah. more expendable. And if we're gonna bet who gets off to a slower start. <laughs> It's going to be Najee, just based off history. Yeah, but we, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. Because it was like, you know, who who do you think would get disgruntled faster also, though? Because if the quarterback situation Najee. doesn't work the way that we want it to work, I don't know. Maybe it's Deontay. Deontay's been a way better, I think, good soldier for us by this not giving anything to the media, yeah. not giving much poor body line. Like his only negative yeah. that I can remember off the top of my head is him not going for that fumble last year. Yeah. Whereas Najee, there have been many times over the last like season, season and a half mm-hmm. where he's talking to the media and you're just thinking to yourself, he doesn't want to be here. Yeah. Like he hates it here. When he said dad, he was like, uh, I forget what he asked about something about the office. He was just like, I can't say this, but da 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 you start going to be like, dang, yeah, he's really like he upset about this situation. Like, yeah, you're right. You're right. Don Drezel, what can... Or oh, wait, oh, oh but yeah, yeah. let me give you yeah. quick. All right. So, shout out to AJ Martinez. Bro, he said these in at 2 in the morning. Salute you, salute you, salute you. All right, so the first one, he says, just in case I'm not awake from my all-night study session, I'd figure i say a couple of things. Shout out to the... To the Ajaman. Yes, me. Oh, shout out to the agent man. Yes, me. Happy birthday to me. February 20th. Miss the clunk of dunk. Continue. All right. All right. Well, happy uh, birthday to you, AJ Martinez. Okay. February 20th. Salute you. And he sent that earlier. All right. All right. Then we also have, he says, the pain of vain, the love for ladies, the midnight maniac, the snag of drag, <laughs> the cool of drool, the one and only AJ freaking Martinez. LOL. Good morning. Love, respect, and blessings to all. Then he also says, yo, 55, I am also... A 55 as in years old. Shout out to my baby girl, Lexi, for putting on a hell of a great B-Day party. Thank you, amazing daughter of mine. Shout out to AJ Martinez. Shout out, shout out. Salute you, baby. And uh, happy birthday. Absolutely. Salute you, baby. I'm glad you turned up the way you turned up, baby. I like that. And shout out to Lexi, too, man. Taking care of, you know, take care of the pops. Five five one five five to another. Respect, baby. Let's get it. Let's get it. So yes, happy happy birthday to you once again, AJ. We always appreciate you tapping in with us, man. Salute you. Stuji McLean has his take Uh-oh. on Najee and Deontay. Oh, well, this nervous. one's this one's more of a retroactive take. It says Naj single handedly got Canada fired. Hmm? No, I, I think Canada got Canada fired. Naj tried to help him. Remember in the bye week, he said, "Yo, we we got some plays. We tried to go talk to him about." Right. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I don't think he got a fire. I hope not. Yeah, I think Canada got Canada fire. Yeah, yeah. Accountability, man. We not seeking comfort. Canada got Canada fire. All right, that's how it goes, man. Accountability. 
yeah, Pat P. Uh, you know what? Speaking of Pat P, man. he had but some yeah, things to say to... about the offense last year. Yeah, shout out to Pat, man. And it was like, yeah, it was just really stale under mm-hmm. Canada. Like, I don't know if we gave Kenny and that offense the best of support yeah. that we could have. Uh, Dondre Zell says, what can Najee do to keep himself as the lead back over Jalen with a new coordinator? Man, I think the thing for Najee is he has to be true to himself. I think of his last year at Alabama and the difference between his last year and the year before that and why his draft stock rocketed the way that it did was because he went back to being who he was, which was a power, physical downhill runner. The year prior, he was trying to dance around people, be more of the small scat bag jumping and stuff like that, and his stock was not as high as it should have been. You watch him his final year at Alabama, he is running through people. He is being mean out there, man. He's stiff-arming them, and it was just the version that made it so appealing to us that we took him in the first round. I think for Najee, if he wants to keep himself as the lead back over Jalen Warren, I love what Jalen brings to the table, but Jalen cannot run the ball like a 6'2", 230, 240-pound man. That's what Najee does do, and Najee does it extremely well when he is on, when he has the block, and that's the reason why he's been able to have, you know, three consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. But at the same time, Najee also has to understand it's a mindset. And we've seen at times where his mindset is more so finesse, trying to run around guys or trying to, you know, juke around guys versus hitting it downhill, physical, and running behind his pads. We know the difference when we watch it. We all can tell the difference. I think for Najee, if he comes out the gate running like it's December, then we're going to love it, and that's going to ultimately keep him in front of Jalen. But if he comes out running like he typically does in September and October, that could be a little bit more of a challenge for him because Jalen just possesses a different element that Najee can't. And I feel like Jalen is more consistently himself. When Jalen gets that ball, it doesn't matter. Good lane, bad lane, pass game, run game. He is bursty. You see the speed, you see the physicality, and you can tell – this guy is one missed tackle away from going to the crib. Even when he gets tackled, you're like, whoo, he almost got about that one. Whereas for Najee, it's kind of hit or miss at times. Sometimes we feel really great about that physical demeanor. Other times we're kind of complaining. Man, come on, bro, just hit that thing. Ah, come on, man, go be physical. Be the bully out there. So I think for him, that's going to have to be, you know, just a mindset from start to finish, especially when you're talking about a new coordinator who doesn't have any, you know, stake in either one of these dudes. Arthur Smith doesn't, you know, he ain't draft any of these guys. He didn't assign any of these guys. He's not attached to any of them at all. So for him, man, if he, you know, feels that Jalen Warren is playing better, what's stopping him from pulling that? We've well, already seen it, that before. Well, especially, yeah. too, with how much Smith utilized Tyler Algier down Absolutely, with the Falcons. Man. And not even him. I mean, he was doing three running back uh-huh. systems a couple years ago. Yeah. This year it was a lot of Bajon and Algier, but even – Patterson was in the mm-hmm. mix. And Cordell, yeah, that's when Cordell got paid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see. Yeah, I could see Jalen Warren having a big year. Uh, next is Tito Good Vibes. Moats thoughts on safety John Huggins from Jackson State played at Florida before he had to transfer. Also, Jablonski Green, D tackle, South Carolina State, HBCU. All right. Well, no, I would definitely get more info on them. The HBCU combine is actually going on. I don't know if they finished yesterday or today, but I know that's been going on this week. Shout out to the HBCU Combine. If I remember correctly, Omar Khan is down there first, and then he'll be in Indy, obviously, next week. Um, So I will look into the HBCU cat. Um, I do like the fact, though, uh, in terms of just John Huggins, um, not a ton of info on him, but in just the sense of you talk about a guy coming from a Power 5, coming from a Florida. If you're at Florida University, it tells me at least athletically you are, you know, a little bit more gifted typically because those guys, yeah, they're not recruiting the undersized dudes. Typically, all those dudes pass the eyeball test. So at least, you know, from that thought process, man, I do at least like that mindset, but I would have to look into him. But there is another safety, though. I saw his name kind of floating around recently. I was like, ooh, all right. He talk a lot, but I like him, though. Who? CJ. From where? Uh, Detroit. Oh, Garner Johnson yeah, yeah, being available. Yeah, I was like, oh, hold on now. 
I was like, hey, it kind of perked me up a little bit because, yeah. That is one of that's, the that's, that's one of my speed, man. signings yeah. we might need to make it. That was one of my speed right I, there. I don't know if it has anything to do with cutting Casey and bringing hey. someone else in, but I do think we should address the position. Hey, that, that's, I'll tell you, that's how I felt. Like I, I would like to just bring back Terrell Edmonds, but if we're bringing in a Gardner Johnson, that doesn't hurt either. Listen, listen. I, as much as I love Edmonds, you know that's my dude. CJ is, you know, I think more productive, and at the same time, man, CJ has also been in some bigger moments, man. He's been in some big time playoff games. He's played in back to back. Well, let's see, NFC championships. I don't think he signed with the Lions for much. Yeah, mm. it was one year, yeah. six and a half, uh, you know, going into twenty twenty three. So if we're if we're you know being real about it, a dude like CJ, I kind of like more in terms of addressing the safety position versus going draft, just because number one, when we're talking defense, man, it's like I said, it's a lot harder at times for young secondary people to come in here and play at this level, just because you can't touch the guys, and the way that they are hypersensitive to flag you for any type of certain contact. I typically like more proven dudes that have already learned how to play at this level. CJ is a physical dude. He's fast as heck. He's confident as heck. He's going to bark at you. But at the same time, he backs it up. And that's the thing I do like. He's not a world beater, but he is a guy that I think elevates your secondary. He is a guy that makes the guys around him play better, play at a higher level. And when you just talk about tough, smart, heady football players, he's one of those dudes. And that's why you see him play at multiple spots now and still thrive. When you see a dude that can play multiple defenses, multiple teams, and it's like, yo, he's still making plays, it lets you know that, yo, that's just a dude right there. It doesn't matter about this coaching. It doesn't matter about the scheme. He just knows how to play. And that's one of the dudes that you could pair with a Minka Fitzpatrick, man. That's exactly what we need. The way you yeah, describe him is exactly bro. what we need yeah. with Minka. Yeah, because he, he can give you a lot of that versatility, man. Playing the basket, playing the post. He's going to hit you. He's going to run. He said, man, it, he go bark too. He he's definitely the guy that's gonna talk though. Like, but it comes with him. Does he have a podcast? I don't think he has a podcast, but no, he's the type of dude that's think All right, green flag. Right yeah, there. think 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 OG Vince Williams when Vince I paint that boy on site. Like he gonna let you know like what time he's on, but he bags it up. Remember, Baker Mayfield coming into town. Man, he was psh, they'd be good if they had a quarterback. Man, them receivers is nice if they had a legit quarterback, and then he turned around and get a pick. You're like, all right, I don't know how you keep doing this. But you be doing it. So it's like it works. But that's his energy, man. But he backs it up. But you've seen him play, what, Detroit. We've seen him in Philly. We've seen him in, I want to say, New Orleans as well. And he's been a playmaker at all them spots, man. Yeah. And like I said, not too Where'd crazy price either. Link? Man, shoot, bro. I just seen some names. You just put two and two together. I seen some names. I'm like, hold on, bro. I ain't tripping on that one now because we do need a safety thing and it could be available. And you know what? That number is not out of this world. And that does par with that. My only Maybe hesit- going to be less than that even, too. My only hesitancy. Getting a little older. My only hesitancy was do we want to keep putting money on defense? That was my only thing. Because I was like, we've already spent a lot on defense. Do we want to add another paid player or defense? So should we? Special the office. That was my only thing. Uh, yeah, because I like him a lot. But nah, I'm like, I'm, I'd yeah. be fine with it because we just got all these young players on offense still. Yeah, but people be tripping. They're like, yo, why we got to keep spending money on the defense? The defense, the defense. They want to spend it on offense somewhere. I'm it like, just depends on what we do uh, with the rest of free agency. If we do heavy free agency mm-hmm. or heavy defense and free agency, then just draft everything on offense. Yeah. If we do a little mix, you know, say we get Gardner Johnson. Do we sign a linebacker? Do we sign a quarterback? Then again, yeah. you could just you go offensive line heavy, I think, in the first yeah. two rounds of the draft. But if we just do Garner Johnson, maybe we sign a lineman, then then you could maybe draft yeah. defense. I think there's just different combinations. You you do. Do I get I get that's what the you're thing. saying. Like, yeah, you keep investing but who else are we gonna pay on offense like that? Outside of maybe a Tyler Boyd, like a like a slot right. receiver. O line is the whole O line would be right the now. other one. Yeah. That's the whole conversation. It's like, yo. Spend money on defense. You got to spend money on defense. Or it's like, spend, it's like not spend, it's like, yo, we keep spending money on defense. When we go spend money on offense? Because it's like, you got TJ Page, you got Larry Ogan, Joey Page, High Smith is paid. We brought in Pat P. You drafted PZ Jr. in the first or in the 32nd overall. There you go. You brought in Atlanta Roberts. You brought in Cole Holcomb. Technically, you brought in Quan Alexander as well. Yeah. Casey isn't like breaking the bank. So it's like, I don't count that all the way, but it's like. Right. I think it depends too on if you're going to yeah. cut a Casey, cut a Neil. Right. 
cut Ogan Joby, because like restructure Cam, see where all this cap space gets up. Yeah, you still got Cam on a big contract too. You took Cam Ben in the second round. It's like you did Herbig also third. He's like, dude, everything is on defense right now. What are we putting in on offense? You brought in Kenny Pickett. You got Najee, who's the first rounder from going on four years now. Pickens, DJ is going into the last year of his deal. Free agent running back and Jalen Warren. So that's the part where I was like, I, I get it. I see some of it. I get it. And I think on defense, we need inside linebacker yeah. more than safety. Right. I so don't if know you're if we spin, address that in free agency yeah. or if that's a draft thing. But I would get, actually, I would go inside linebacker and cornerback before safety. Yeah. So Edmonds could be the perfect fit. He could because he is cheap. Yeah. He would be a lot cheaper. We could probably just cut yeah. Casey and Neal and replace it with Edmonds and it'd be a, a scratch. It'd be a wash. Yeah. For the money. That's the play. Yeah. Who knows if Edmonds has hard feelings towards us or not. But I don't think so. No. Nah. That's what I would do yeah. if I'm the Steelers. Pair up Edmonds with Minka again. Figure out corner, whether it's free agency or draft. Mm-hmm. Definitely get a new linebacker in here. I think your your defense is fine. Yeah. I think we could live with this defensive line going into 2024. But then, yeah, you got to upgrade the O line on yeah. offense. Because that's the thing. It's like offense is like, man, to go spend more money where we're not talking about an Edmonds deal, where it's, you know, two mil max, we talking potentially a five or a six. So, yeah. Dang, bro, we gonna spend even more money on that side. Like, granted, we got Broderick, but especially too, if you bring yeah. back Pat P, say you sign Edmonds, you could have a nice little free safety rotation there. Yeah. Because we gotta put Pat P at safety if he does come back, right? I would think so. He admitted as much on his podcast. I, would say, like, I, I do want to come so. back, but it's probably not gonna be a corner. Yeah, I would think so. We we'll see if he wanted, like, as long as he want to tackle, that's the whole name of the game. We've seen what it can be. If you tackle, it works really well. When it doesn't tackle, it doesn't work well. But I like it. It could definitely do the coverage part. We know that. We've seen that. Yeah, then it you definitely does the coverage move part. Move Edmonds up for yeah. certain formations. Yeah. Move Edmonds up, have Pat P. Menka back there, do mm-hmm. all the disguises you've talked about. I think it could be nice. Yeah. It's too common sense. I don't know if we're going to do it, though. It's way too common sense. You know we're not going to do it. <laughs> Dondre Zell. But oh, I, oh, 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 before we get to Dondre, too. AJ oh, yeah, just yeah, came through that. with the big boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely got to show AJ some love. Shout out to AJ once again. Happy birthday to you. All right. Shout out to Lexi as well. He says, thank you for all the blessings. Sabotage 7 for the Diggler. Thank you for saying that on your birthday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But Sabotage Canada, question mark. Uh, Jerry Dulek said mm-hmm. they almost benched 8 but fired Canada instead. And Mitch T was asked to text. I did see this. This was, this was terrible. Mitch T was asked to text. Welcome to the team right after eight got drafted. I want Fields at quarterback, he said. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Refresh me. What, what was this? What was this? I missed this. I saw the Trubisky. You this know, is, you know this I was going, terrible. bro. You know I was going. I missed this. I actually this. feel bad for Mitch. I was all the way your plug, bro. Talk to me. Talk to me. What happened now? What happened? <laughs> let, me, let me try to pull up the article. Bro, what? But he basically said it in that sentence there. When Pickett was drafted, I think the Steelers texted Mitch. And Mitch, having no clue that they were going to draft quarterback either, they texted Mitch oh. and said, hey, can you send a little congratulation message to Pickett on getting wow. drafted to the team? Wow. Ah. Yeah, that's a, that's a terrible look. Like, I don't like that. Ah. Cause you, you know I'm a Pickett guy, but I don't, yeah. I don't like him being coddled like that. I don't. That is. St- <laughs> I, I don't like that at all. Yeah, that, ooh. Hey, y'all don't rotate, so you know what time it is. Oh, man. Hey, hey, Deke, we just drafted the first round. Just send him a text. Make him, just, just make him feel a little better about himself, all right? We know what time this is. Uh, let me try to find this. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, because this is one of the more underrated stories that I popped up over the last week. I this one. Yeah, I missed this one, bro. Yeah, because you had Pat P saying some stuff. Yeah. Obviously, there's... Fields talk, Pickett talk, Cousins, Wilson talk. But, yeah, this one kind of flew under this, the radar. This definitely was just chilling. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. But that is true. It's all that good. is true. It's all I read good. the Dulac article where he said that. What so they AJ almost say? benched eight. Okay. No surprise with that. But they decided to fire Matt Canada. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean... I get the whole them telling Mitch to text him. I get it. 
and I definitely could understand the weird vibe that that probably sent for Mitch and why they wanted Mitch specifically to send that message to Kenny Man as well. That's the business side of it. That's the business side. And you just feel here like, I hate the business side of football at times, bro. Here it is. Yeah. Ready? Uh, okay. <clears throat> Mitch obviously gets signed to the Steelers early in the 2022 free agency. Six weeks later, uh, Steelers took the first quarterback off the board in the draft, Kenny Pickett. Trubisky realized he'd be legitimately competing for the starting spot. In the shadow of a rookie who provided hope to bridge the gap of success between Ben Roethlisberger mm -hmm. and success. It doesn't appear Trubisky was looped into that plan as a recent report takes us back to that very night. All right, Jerry Dulac writes, Trubisky never stood a chance with the Steelers. Six weeks after he signed to the two-year, $14.3 million contract, the Steelers took Pickett and with their number one pick in the draft. That night, Trubisky was a little surprised by a text message that, among other things, Asked him to text and congratulate the newest Steelers quarterback. No wonder he played as though he was always looking over his shoulder after that. Yeah, that's terrible. I feel bad for Mitch there. I, 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 yeah. I don't like that. They said the fix was in? I don't like that. No, I don't. I don't like that. I don't. I obviously, at the time, wanted Kenny to start. 2022 off the bat week one and you know i was calling for him early in the season too after mm -hmm. mitch in my opinion wasn't giving us enough mm -hmm. but i yeah i don't like how things started here mm -hmm. with mitch and us drafting kenny and that whole dynamic I don't, I don't like that i don't doesn't change my opinion on wanting kenny to be the starter for that season or yeah wanting mitch bench but it's just, why are we why are we doing that why are we doing that because they're overthinking it yeah, You're like, overthinking it because why? Why can't players just process things naturally and because this is a billion have their own business, way of handling man. things. This is a business, and you cannot afford for your investment to be wrong. So, in terms of why they tell Mitch the first round to use, or why they tell Mitch the phrase we just signed, you specifically need to text Kenny is because I can't have my first round quarterback the most important player on my team feeling uncomfortable. I need him to feel like he's welcomed here. I need him to feel like you're going to be his ally, not his competition. They want to make sure of that. Because uh -huh. knowing Mitch, he probably naturally would have done that. Yeah, but Mitch has also got a dog in him. and He's going to want to say, yo, I'm better than you. Yeah, right. And that should be the case. But, but you can't. You, you, still don't, you, you, but, you can still handle yourselves like professionals. But... That is dangerous when you're talking about rookie quarterbacks because you don't know how they're going to respond to that. And it's not like other positions where I can be a dog and be at you, but you can still be on this field with me and we can eat together. Quarterback, once I beat you out, I'm the guy. You're just sitting there. You're holding the clipboard and everybody's talking about are you good or not. The longer you sit and wait, is he? does he not know the play? What's going on with him? So I just think in that vein for the organization – they said, yo, if we're going to pick him in the first round, we got to make sure that this investment is going to do and progress the way that we want him to progress. And we said they're going to give him every opportunity. And we've been seeing it. We said that even before they fired Matt Cannon, we said, yeah, they will fire your coordinator before they get rid of the quarterback. That's the first rounder within two years. And we saw it. We thought it was going to get rid of Coach T for a, 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 an extent. Because, once again, this is the first round investment. Within two years, they're going to give it every opportunity. So in that vein for Mitch, I'm sure he was surprised. And I'm sure he was pissed off to an extent. And I'm sure no matter what he did at practice or even in games, he always felt as if he was going to be looking over his shoulder because that's the reality of it when they draft that first round to end your position. You play long enough, it happens. And that's the weird relationship that you got to build where your big brother competition and at the same time you pissed off because you know this ain't even a legitimate competition it's just i'm holding this spot until they decide they're ready to pull the trigger don't matter what i do even if it's not even bad they're gonna make it seem a lot worse even if it's really good they're gonna minimize that and even if what he does is just all right they're gonna gas it all the way i don't know up. if i agree with that completely and i think i think if he would have balled out trust me that's fine i'm just speaking from experience 
that's fine. I know what this is, man. <laughs> that's it, bro. Yeah, maybe you're talking more yeah. within the organization yeah. and how they handle it. Because I yeah. think as fans, if Mitch balled out early in that season, we're sitting at three and one, and he's got a couple games with like 250 uh, yards, two touchdowns. Uh, but we're, we're, we're just riding with Mitch. But we're talking about more so. You're saying regardless of this part of it, I just wanted this result. The same thing that we're talking about for Kenny in terms of putting them in the best environment, not just physically, but mentally, because that is the toughest position. Mitch is letting you know right now when they drafted him, that whole, hey, Mitch, we're going to make sure that you are in the best space you need to be in to be our guy was gone. That's out the window now. Everything that you're doing going forward is to make sure that he is okay. It's to make sure that he is going to be ready because at some point in time, he is going to be the guy out here. Regardless of what you do, regardless of what you say, he is going to be out here at some point in time. It's just a matter of when we ready to pull that trigger. Now, you could expedite it if you come out here and play slow, regardless of what is going on. Or you could delay it a little bit, but it's going to happen. And that's a tough scenario to be in, man. That's all. And we talked yeah, about sure. it, right? Your first two games, you come out, you playing slow. Why? It's the first two games. You got the crowd booming you on top of that. You know what the situation is with your quarterback. That's a tough place to be in, bro. You tight. How do you play loose? That's difficult, man. But that's the part where we say, in terms of, you know, just football, it's sometimes more than just is it got good or not. Sometimes it is the behind the scenes stuff that goes into it. But you still got to go out there and execute. And that's the part where he didn't. And that's why yeah. when you don't execute and they draft the first round, that they move on as quickly as they did. And now you get the scenario that he was in. That's just the NFL. But that's why we say it's a business. It's not always about who's the better player. Oh, let's really compete. Let's make it fair. And that's why we keep joking about the Mason part. It's like, huh, do you really think it's going to be a legitimate, legitimate competition if he come back? There's another person now this kind of lets you know an indicator that I'd like. To think <laughs> it so. really don't seem like it's going to be a legitimate competition. But that's the part, you know, where for Mason, he got to figure out if he trusts him or not. Yeah, as you've brought up, depends on the money we give them. And then you just see, yeah. yeah. You, you just see how it plays out, really. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I don't I don't like how this started for Mitch, if this story is true. I don't, I don't like that. I, I really don't. Don't try to force that. Just... But it's a business. And like I said, man, when it's a business, bro, I've been in places where your first rounder is – struggling mightily and he doesn't even feel engaged or have a passion to actually want to be professional and coaches are begging and pleading this dude almost in tears to get him to want to do something well and because he's the first rounder and because was in within that first two years bro you're watching this coach being like bro why do i have to even deal with this player but upstairs is telling that dude yo he's playing i don't care what you say if you need these other guys, you make sure they on special teams so you can have them with you on game day. But this cat right here, he is dressing and he is playing, bro. And you be sitting here like, bro, what are we doing? If this is college, man, this dude is a joke. He's not even out here, bro. High school, you don't even think about this. But at the NFL level, because that's the first rounder, it doesn't matter that you better than him or more productive than him. He is going to be out there. He is going to get an opportunity, man. And that's just, like I said, the business part of it, bro. And that's the part that, like I said, when you come back to coming back to uh, in terms of Mason, right? Trusting that they're going to actually give you a legitimate chance at this. That's the stuff that you also battling because you've seen it. He's seen it now at multiple yeah. spots. It's not just a quarter. He's seen multiple first rounders here since Mason has been here. Think about the first rounders that have come here and the varying levels of success they've had. But the amount of opportunities that they've had. It makes it sit here this whole time. Like, bro, I got one opportunity and never again. Now I get this opportunity and now y'all acting funny. Or you just talking a little funny. What's a little slow? That's the stuff where it's the business part of it, man. It just sucked that. Yeah, because I think that's what this, that's how this story holds weight yeah. now or how, how it does. Because if we look at how the Mitch. Kenny saga played out over the last two years. I think it makes sense yeah. when we look back because I didn't think Mitch was giving us enough. Kenny comes mm -hmm. in. He had a little bit of a slow start. Had some rookie mistakes early on, but how we ended 2022, yeah. you felt like, yeah, Kenny, Kenny is yeah. the QB one. Like, yeah. I'm happy we put him in over Mitch. And then coming into this season, 
even though Kenny was having the struggles, we were at seven and four yeah, at one point winning. before yeah. he got hurt. Mitch mm-hmm. comes in, and plays. He played bad. Yeah, pretty he bad for bad. those three games. Yeah. Pretty bad. But now it's yeah, it's this Mason dynamic mm-hmm. that you're looking at, and you're hearing a story like this and wondering, okay, are they gonna go that far with Pickett? For 2024, because to in terms ex- of like making yeah. sure he has that upper hand going into the offseason, or if we do resign Mason, is it just going to be a clean competition? There's yeah. not going to be any biasness there. Because I think both thought process can be true. Because to an extent, we've already seen that we both would agree Mason when he did in that four game sample consecutively, we hadn't had that since Ben had been playing here. Yeah. But even with that being the case, it's still isn't a foregone conclusion that you sign back we want you to be the guy and that's the part where for mason i'm sure that makes him very uneasy because to an extent we both at some point have said if mason is playing like that four game sample size over 17 games that's a top 10 quarterback absolutely that's high-end quarterback play but you're telling me me showing you that for what a quarter of a season would be right we say every four games a quarter of a season so me showing you that over a quarter of a season still hasn't convinced you. It still makes you feel like I still need to see this some more. And you're about to bet your career on that decision, man. That's the part worth amazing. I'm sure he's going through a lot of that right now, man. Yeah, you got to see what the market yeah, is. Yeah, because you're like, bro, I balled. I played. I did what I was supposed to do. But yet you still are kind of on the fence about if that was enough to really unseat this dude or not. Yeah, and from the Steelers' standpoint, like you're looking at the season as a whole. Yeah. And you're thinking about Kenny being your first round pick right. and him being younger than Mason mm-hmm. and knowing that Canada was there for most the majority, of Kenny's yeah. season. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you got to look at all that. Like, and project, yeah. all right, what does Kenny look like right. under Arthur Smith? How bad do we need to bring Mason back? Or if, if the number's too much, can we let him walk? Yeah. There's all that stuff going on right now. It's yeah, it's gonna be interesting, and it's still even with this business part of it, and even though certain things are slanted towards Kenny, we're not gonna discredit Kenny and act like he still hasn't done certain things to justify absolutely him being out there. Because I do feel like at times when not us in this convo, but obviously it's not, very obviously easy. Not me, right? yeah, it's easy for you know while we're talking about Mish now, it kind of seems as if like oh well, it was really just handed to him and he hasn't no, done anything I, to deserve I it. I think as the two years played right. out, we can say he's Kenny was the better things. option for the Steelers yes. over Mitch. I was now the question. Done certain things. That's what I was saying. Now the right. question is Kenny versus Mason, who's the yeah. better option? Absolutely, but that's the part where it's like both things can be true. Has Kenny done certain things to justify the decision? Yes. But can Mason feel a lot of anxiety or a lot of uncertainty about this decision because of how they handled it when Mitch was in a very similar position? Yeah. Especially when you're seeing, again, absolutely, a report man. come out like this. Yeah, absolutely. So, I was like I said, I think both things could be true with that, man. Uh, Don Drezel, take a look at Brandon or Braden Fisk, D. Lyman for FSU. He's a beast. All right. All right. About to say it, man. I hope you at the combine, man. I'm coming with a whole long list of... Hey, man, what's your name, bro? Who's you? All right, I got you, man. Uh, uh, uh. Fisher Momentum says, welcome back. Ambition tonight. Shout Hashtag out, Mr. Jack Myers Jr. Is it Friday? Oh, it is Friday. Day, go on, bro. Yeah. I was tripping. I was like, what day is it? Yeah, I'm so crisscross. But shout out, shout out. Yes, that is tonight, man. Shout out. If y'all are local, man, and y'all in the city, man, pull up on them. Pull up on them. Tony Daniel the second. I think J.J. McCarthy is a better version of KP. And would want him in a trade if trade up if we have mm-hmm. the means. COVID Kenny stays six feet apart from the end zone and red bone distancing. Red bone distancing, Lord, man, stop it, man! Don't do him like that. But but this is my only thing. You say I think JJ McCarthy is a better version of Kenny Pickett and would want us to trade up to get him. But yet you got the crying laughing emojis as if you saying it like JJ McCarthy isn't good is he good or not good to you that's my own like i don't know you kind of kind of had me mixed up a little bit baby to me i see what you're saying my only rebuttal would be is at least i'm seeing kenny already in the nfl doing certain things we're gonna find out about jj we're gonna find out i I ain't the biggest jj believer jim harbaugh said he should be the number one overall quarterback i I, I saw him say that and and I, i think you know what hey harbaugh won't you prove it if you believe that strongly about him, go ahead and prove it. Okay? 
Go ahead. Ain't nothing stopping no, you from Herbert. proving it. He, yeah. he also said in yeah. the same breath that yeah. he's really excited he's got Herbert. Yeah, because that's my thing. I'm like, okay, if you believe he's all that, but won't you go take him in the first round then? Okay. Oh, yeah, it's the easiest take yeah. to have. That's actually an Absolutely. amazing way for him to yes. just show how good of a guy he is uh -huh. and, and good of a coach or just program builder yeah. because you have Herbert already. Uh -huh. So it's... There's a no lose scenario he for you saying this comment. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. already have Herbert. You're obviously not drafting McCarthy, uh -huh. but you're showing other players out there yeah. who could have a decision, whether it's in free agency uh -huh. or going back to college, whether or not they want to play for you, that you're going to stick up for your guy. Yeah, I'm going to hold you down, bro. Yeah. yeah. I think you should be the number one overall quarterback. You're like, bro, what? Not if Jim Harbaugh says it, maybe, you know, it does probably get some people saying, ah, yeah, should we reevaluate? Uh, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure. I'm sure. Who are you bumping them over? Drake May or, uh, or Caleb? Uh, neither. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next wave. No, I will say Jaden Daniels. No, I will say uh, Caleb Williams might be moving down my draft board a little bit. Okay, okay. What's what's made you switch a little bit? I'm listening. <laughs> ah, dude. He he did the GQ photo shoot. It was fire. Come on, man, don't do that. Bruh. It was fire, bro. It was fire. And he wore a dress. It was fire, bro. He wore a dress. Uh, Young Thug wore a dress. It's the hot to stick. Come on, man. I think he's bumped down <laughs> at least a spot. Yo, Drake come May's on, over man. him, maybe. And come I might on, be putting Jaden Daniels over come him, too. Come on, man. He's, he's going down no, my draft. No, don't do him like that, man. <laughs> Young Thug wore a dress, bro. Young Thug wore a dress. He said it's the hot to stick, all right? When you got that hot on you, you know what I'm saying? See, he, he had the thing on. He had to hide it. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, he gangster still. He's still good. Yeah, and the fingernail polish. He's still gangster with it. I we think, ain't tripping. I think he's moving down my draft. Uh-uh. He, he painted his fingernails like Drake. Drake said he got the smiggy nail. He, same thing. So it was like, yo, all right, we got that. So he Drake and Young Thug. I ain't tripping on it, bro. I like both of them. They good. That works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> uh, but no, I'm not moving. Uh, JJ McCarthy. Yeah, McCarthy. He's, dudes, yeah. yeah, he's he's around. Yeah, he's probably the sixth guy. Five yeah. or six or something. That's my and, and that I don't see Panics, Bone yeah. He's in uh, that mix. Who else? Who else is in that mix? <sighs> yeah, I mean, no, no, I guess he would be six then. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I just named the top Penix three. Is five. Right, yeah. yeah. Penix, Bone Nicks, four, five, mm -hmm. and then McCarthy at six. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was my takeaway from seeing him a little bit throughout the season and also seeing him in the playoffs. I don't know. I could see it. Like I, I, he, he, he looks, looks he looks more like uh, like a, a guy you're taking late first, mm. high second. Derek Carrish yeah. coming into he's the draft. He's a good player. Yeah, I think he yeah, could legitimately be a good quarterback. Yeah, I think he could. It's just when you say, "Oh, we take him first, best quarterback." He's like, "Ah, nah, we ain't going that far." That's that's just a lot more of a statement. You, you gotta appreciate it. I do uh, like it though. If you're JJ McCarthy, hearing yeah. that from your coach Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. Uh, Tony Daniel the second. Since we like to bring up the KP comebacks, what about Russ? He is like thirty, and a vet minimum is a possibility. Is it really though? I'm really hard. Well, pressed I to did see say him Russ would be that guy. Like I, and I'm saying <laughs> I do not see him signing. I, I'm with you. Minimum, There's bro. 97 percent chance he yeah, doesn't. But I'm just like, for what? There's a three percent chance he yeah. would be that guy and say, "I'm just yeah. doing it for the team." Yeah. If that happens, I'll be the first one to. Be in love with this signing. Be in love with just yeah, everything it's still about Russell it, man. Wilson. Yeah, Russ is still Russ, but I just Russ to me, man. Regardless of my personal feelings about his play or even where he's at, right as a quarterback or how he's viewed, he is far away from a vet minimum, man. Like that ain't even the type of dude that I'm even telling him, bro. Come on here and take this risk for vet minimum for what? Like, man, what you've already accomplished, what you've already been able to do multiple organizations man you don't risk your body your well-being for anything less than that number that you know you deserve bro that's yeah that, that's oh i don't see russ doing it though bro i don't see russ doing it man russ a market guy too he knows that kills you that kills a lot of like upcoming quarterback stuff too man because if a russ is the benchmark for certain quarterbacks and we're saying are you better than this guy or not him taking a vet men deal it's like, yo, now we got something to legitimately argue against you with because now he has, in a sense, set a new number right here. Yeah, I'm guessing yeah. he'll be getting at least $20 million. 
Yeah. That would be my guess. Yeah, I'm like, bro, a team would throw him 20 before he... Yeah, I'm just... I, yeah, I still think... It's Russ. Yeah, he Russ played ain't good terrible. Yeah, I'm about to say, we don't like Russ for 40 plus million. Russ at 20 million, you still going to be like, bro, Russ is straight for this contract because now we're going to have even more pieces around him. Russ is still going to be straight like that. You just don't want to. That's the whole Kirk Cousins combo. It's like and his clock. Like that. Yeah. You want to talk about? He's right. Bringing up Kenny Pickett and his mm-hmm. fourth quarter QB ratings. Like sometimes in Seattle, Russell Wilson. Holy, he was doing it a little bit yeah, last Denver, year in Denver. Yes. Yeah, he he was doing some really the, nice fourth quarter stuff. It's not about you know is he still talented? We are talking about when you're paying him for forty mil or he's the highest paid and he's doing and he's like yo, can you be the guy that is God level out here yeah. for everybody? That version isn't there to me, but a reduced pay with another weapon or two in a different situation, I'm like, yeah, he can still get off. He can still do what he's supposed to do. Right. Like, if you got Russ at 28, yeah. but not on, yet, bro. you're getting Russ at like 35, 36. Yeah. You talk about a dude that's cerebral as heck. You're not going to fool him coverage wise. He's already been in some of the biggest moments. You know, in terms of clutch genes, you talk Kenny Pickett, like we said, this outside of seven, this was Mr. Clutch. You know what I mean? Like, in terms of them late fourth quarter type things, man. And he still got the mobility. That's my thing. And he's a good guy. You can't go wrong with having a good guy. Uh, over the top good guy at times. But hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> cheesy is <laughs> we right. That that's yeah, there. You go. That's there. the that's yes. the better way to yes. put. it. I guess you can't be too good of a guy. Right. It's nothing wrong <laughs> being too good of a guy. But can he be cheesy at times? Sure. But at the same time, it's like, bro. You would much rather be a cheesy role model than some of these other guys out here. That's how I look. Get, give me Russ over AB if we talking role models, all right? <laughs> sure, I, I if you're going to go to these streams, one, absolutely. Man. Yeah, I could work with that. I, it's not my personal cup of tea, but you, I can work with it. I can work with that. that. My little man could wear that jersey. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Tito Good Vibes gifted a match membership to Leah Warren. Shout out to Tito being a rock star and Leah Warren. With her morning gals breakfast brunch. Welcome to the upper room. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And hit that like button for the culture one time since the homie Quan Summer says so. Salute you, Quan. Salute you. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Now, we usually don't wake and bake. We usually at afternoon, you know, kick back 4 to 6, 30 p.m. type of vibe. But we needed to get out some content. And it's Friday. Typically, me and Deke don't work Fridays. We like to work third. We like Friday juniors. We don't like Fridays. We like to chill on Friday. We like our weekends. All right. Yeah. We use the weekend guys. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. this was. Uh... So hit that like button. <laughs> Deep walked in. Say yo, it was a morning, bro. It's, it's rough. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's no, I'm not. I'm not seeking comfort at all. Actually, got that look, bro. Was this rough one, bro? Comfort. Are we good? Am I straight? Bro, you good, bro? Come on, man. You sure, bro? Ah, oh, man. Just, I just, bro, go on the trip, man. Just good, bro. You good? Yeah, just, just pull up. Go on trip. <laughs> I think I had a really good streak going too, of yeah. not being late. It had yeah, to have been months. Been, you were early. Think about it, you've been early the past couple times, bro. No, I, I'm saying like. How many? When, when's the last time we've actually had to move back? Maybe there's oh, been a text no, thrown no, no. like it's, I might need five. No, no, no. Yeah, it's been. It's it been might a be minute, months. Bro. It's been a minute. Yeah, I had a good streak going. Yeah, it's been a minute. This, it it I, was just funny, Friday bro. Ruined it for Cause me. Because you, you was, yo, know, I could feel your passion though. My man hit me when you hit me with multiples. I was like, oh, yeah, I was excited for the show. <laughs> so, I wanted to get here and. <laughs> so my dog, the game, to be back. My dog sitting with, the, hey, hold on, it's us. Ah, oh, I'm like, yo. We straight. I you. need five. I'm just I like, need yo, ten minutes. Just, I'm over here just like, Deke, just make it safely, please. All right. I just, just keep. Just, if you could get here, it don't matter. Just just pull up. We gonna be good. <laughs> yo, Young has a prospect suggestion. Says, look okay, out for okay. Peyton Wilson. He can go 23 miles an hour in a game, and mm. as a 240 inside linebacker, and as a coverage linebacker. All right. Sounds all like right. this dude should go in the top ten. No, we'll see, man. <laughs> we will definitely see, man. I, I would just say, straight line speed is great. But that does not always translate to being a good cover guy. You know what I mean? We talk about just the reading of hips, stuff like that. So I don't know about Peyton just yet, but I will definitely tap into him even more. So like I said, I'm making my list. I'm good now, babe. We bag. We, we ready to rock. So, yeah. Now, I had a thought a couple weeks ago yeah. regarding inside linebacker. Would it be crazy for us to spin the block on some of these athletic dudes that were drafted last year? Mm-hmm. Like a Drew Sanders... A Trent Simpson. I like Trent Day Simpson. And like, you know I like Could Trent we Simpson. potentially make a trade for one of those dudes? I would love to go get Trent Simpson after watching him play us the final game of the year when he got to start out there for Roquan Smith. 
I like him a lot. I just don't think that Baltimore would give him up because Patrick Queen is about to be a free agent. So yeah, I think he's hit, I think he's off. Drew Sanders. Hold on, what what round did Drew go in? Third. We could have gotten any yeah. of those dudes, but we traded back to get right. thrown out Washington. Jack, That's looking like a mistake. We can't touch Jack. They love him in uh, Detroit. Uh, oh, yeah. Campbell. He went early. Yeah, he was like, they took him early. Second, second round. Second round, yeah. Was. They left him out because he went before Drew. We was kind of surprised. Like, whoa, they went with the, the thumper versus the athlete. Yep. Yeah. I wouldn't hate potentially trying to see even with, uh, you know, some of the action in Jacksonville, what they got going on with either uh, Devin Lord or even with a Chad Mooma. Those are some other ones. Boys been block playing home. good. Yeah, that might be tough. But potentially spending the block in terms of just bringing in guys that we liked in yeah. the draft because that is something that Coach Tomlin definitely does. We've seen that if it's somebody that was linked to him or he's liked him in the draft, that's part of even why Justin feels. And we'll talk about some of that stuff too. Is like keeps getting brought up because of some of the comments that he was making specifically. During that time, that was another do like report too. He's yeah. been hot this last week. No, nah, do like do like in his bag, bro. Do like nobody know. <laughs> do like hey, do do like some made man. Yeah, he's made man. <laughs> but yeah, I just I was just thinking that like, all right, maybe what if we don't have to draft a linebacker early? Mm-hmm. What if we can maybe trade a pick for a guy that's fallen out of favor with his organization, like one of the guys yeah. that we were liking over the last year or two in the draft. Mm-hmm. Because all it takes is, you know, one to two years and all right, team moves in a different direction. They draft somebody or pay a guy and now you're the odd man out. doesn't mean that you're not good. It just means that now you're not as valuable in this organization, but you still have a lot of value elsewhere. And sometimes, yeah, teams are part with that. So, yeah. Skeeter Jones, Cooper DeGene, the more I watch film on him, the more I like the dude. Okay. Pairing him with JPJ, the dude can ball and has size to be a safety. There you go. Yeah, safety. I think you keep saying safety. That, that's the cover with safety. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Whenever I first watched him, I said, I think yeah. this guy should be a safety. Because that's the whole debate. It's like, are you trying to take him in the first round to be a corner or are you taking him to be a safety? As a safety, yeah, I think you're going to love him. As a corner, I think it'd maybe be a, a maybe a do throw him at corner for you know, 10, 15 plays or something. No, you know, no, I mean, no, just no, move no, him no, around. No, 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 Using him in a versatile way like Kyle Hamilton is different than saying Kyle Hamilton line outside and play corner or Kyle be a full time corner, right? That's the that's right. how I look at Cooper. I'm like, that's what I, Cooper, yeah, you're yeah. versatile. Could you use him like a Swiss Army knife, almost like a not a Tyron Matthew player, but like how Tyron was used in multiple ways? It's like, yeah, he's a smart player. He's athletic. He could do all of that type of stuff. But do I like him as just a, a corner just to play predominantly by himself in the league? Uh, 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 I don't love it. Put put him in the cover two. Got a little cover two situation. I ain't tripping on that. Yeah. Joe Gerbis, Motes, any chance we realistically get Amani Bailey? Hmm. He said realistically. Te- well, technically, we should say that anybody is, is possible. Technically. I don't know even who that is. Yeah. But technically, anybody is possible. Let's get you Eric Cook. Get you, get you a full update, man. For Imani Bailey? Mm-hmm. Coming out. Get you real quick. <clears throat> is this a receiver? No, running back. Toast that rock. Oh, that's the dude mm-hmm. from the... Uh... Mm-hmm. Senior mm-hmm. pool. Yeah, he looked good. Mm-hmm. He, I, I think he was one of the guys. He was flashing. Were we talking there. about stock out? Yes. Yeah, he looked good. He looked like the best of the running backs from what mm-hmm. I can remember. Is there any chance we get him? Yeah, if he's going in like the fifth it's or like, sixth round. Yeah. I don't see why you can't do that. But to me, I, I, if I remember correctly in my notes, I want to say he was the one I said reminded me a little bit of. Um, wasn't Jalen. Hold on, where is I'm trying to get my uh my note on him, man, because I'm gonna writing down about him. Jeez Louise. And of course I can't find my dig on notes. That's that fresh bag, man. It's the fresh bag. Uh but I definitely had him in my notes though, man. Tony Daniel the second. I want us to grab A. D. Mitchell in the second round. Trade up. And I get Martavis vibes. Fellas, thoughts? Uh, I'm not sure enough for a receiver. Not you said early. you don't want a receiver right now? No, not early. No. No, especially not a trade-up. Well, I'm still back and forth on what we talked about, too, in terms of would you rather go free agency to address that versus trying to draft a receiver a little bit early on? 
Yeah, I think we got our top two guys yeah. with Deontay and Pickens. Like, I'm satisfied with them. So we're yeah. just looking for a third dude. And I think you could get that in yeah. third, fourth round or a dude like Tyler Boyd or, yeah. you know, whatever other say, receivers out there. Maybe you could get on a single digit contract. Yeah. Cause it was like obviously. Uh, I think you part ways with Robinson. Well, I think that was the reports they were saying because they could save. I forgot how much money they were going to be able to save by uh, partnering with him. So I was like, I get that. Yeah, I thought that was a foregone conclusion. Yeah. I actually thought this was the last year of his contract. So yeah, yeah, that's still a future move that needs to be made to clear up cash right. space. So it was like we know that's going to happen. It's just a matter of guessing when. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um blunt y'all going kirker fields who gets us to a bowl i think this question's for you man i would go uh oh i'm excited for both i would go fields ah uh, actually you said who gets us to a bowl who gets to a bowl kirk <laughs> yeah excuse me on that one kirk gets us to a bowl who is uh the long-term answer potentially between the two fields okay so that's how I look at that. But for a fact, you throw Kirk on this roster, yeah, Kirk is going to cook. And Kirk is going to get his raise exactly where we need to be. A hundred percent. hundred percent. I feel great with that, man. And uh, yeah, with Phils, like I said, man, he's the exciting one. He has the higher ceiling, the chance to be elite. But at the same time, his floor is a lot lower than Kirk Cousins. So that's the, big reason, the biggest reason why I don't feel like, you know, he just gets us to a Super Bowl immediately versus a Kirk Cousins. But Kirk Cousins also has proven a lot more in this league, and that's why his price tag is what it is also in this league, because he could play. And he's shown that he could play in multiple spots, kind of like when we talk about C.J. Gardner-Johnson. It's like, man, when you're playing in multiple places and you're still having a lot of success, it starts to show that, okay, you're just a guy that can play. Regardless of, you know, Kirk being able or being in a position to win a Super Bowl, Right, we said, okay, we could talk team stats versus individual stats. The one thing about Kirk, though, is his game has shown, whether it's in Washington or in Minnesota, he is going to produce. And that's the thing that, um, to me, man, when you're talking about what we were struggling or lacking with these past two years has been just consistent production at the quarterback position. So, yeah, that's why I say it's a no-brainer. It would be Kirk, but Kirk going to cost way more money. Whereas Phil's feels his floor is low his floor is low right now but what it can get to ah, that's the crazy part because you like bro you could do all of that but i don't know how long or if it ever does get to that no different than when we talked to kenny pickett convo it's like does it ever get to that and what exactly is that so yeah but that's my energy with it man yeah i think next year kirk would be the Best chance for us to win yeah. a Super Bowl, Kirk versus Justin Fields. But yeah. Kirk's what, Kirk. uh, 35, 36, yeah. coming off an Achilles. Yeah, it's going to cost, man. Justin Fields is younger than Pickett. So, yeah. yeah, long term, I think Fields has the potential to be the better solution than yeah. Kirk Cousins. But just for one season, if like, hey, we, wanna, we want our best chance to win a Super yeah. Bowl next year. I think Kurt would be the better option. But it would also have to be under the context of one of them weird, voidable year deals because otherwise you're going to kill your roster. Right, your right, right, right. Here. You'd just be going yeah. all in on one year. Right. All I like the Rams with Stafford, right. really. I think yeah. if you do that, then, yeah, you got a legitimate chance. But the Steelers typically don't you know, mortgage the future on one season like that because – that's just a lot that you're putting in for that one player. And like you said, Kirk doesn't have the track record like a Brady. Doesn't have the track record like Peyton Manning. You know, where it's like, yo, you've seen these guys win it all. You've seen these guys be the force multiplier and be worth all of that. That's my only hesitancy with that one. Yeah, and the Rams were just... Yeah. That's the thing. They, they were, were just, loaded, bro. They were just doing that all yeah. in stuff before they even got Stafford. Yeah. Stafford was just he, he another piece. Fell they into just, the plays. Yeah. yeah, they just felt like, yeah, I don't think we can do this with golf. So let's get a yeah. better version of him. I think yeah. it's going to be Stafford. And you then see? they saw things working with Stafford. That's when they got like bro, Von Miller and did yeah. some other midseason trades. Jalen Ramsey, Von Miller, yeah. Odell Beckham, Robert. You yeah, like, bro? Beckham, how do you got Beckham all too. these? Yeah, yeah. Cooper Cup. You like, bro? How do you got all of these players here at the same time? Andrew Whitworth. So you like, bro? And then you lose them all like next like, year. Like y'all got everybody over here, man. <laughs> AJ Martinez, go ahead. Oh, you go. Ahead. No, no. I was just thinking about just even on the back, and I'm like, 
think about how many other dudes from just that defense say yo getting paid. Leonard Leonard Floyd yeah paid to go to Buffalo. Taylor Rat was a safety over there paid to go to Buffalo. It's like man, all these little cats over here. Jalen Ramsey still getting paid. Went to go Miami. Von Miller Buffalo paid. Mm. Hey, I think we took a lot of them from that squad. Now that I think about it. <laughs> all right. Said three Buffalo Bills that quick. Wait a minute, that was actually I wasn't even trying to do that. Yeah. Adrian Martinez says the Barbarian is here. It's Shout on out. YouTube with Eisen. Let's go. Let's go. Sean0989. He was the veteran QB asking to support the rookie. Ain't bad. This is poor journalism. Same clickbait BS as always. No, that's a different perception. Um when you're just trying to minimize it as supporting the rookie, that's actually not the case. Um, publicly, yeah, that's definitely how they want it to be perceived, I'm sure, because it just makes it look better. But in terms of just the personal experiences of it, when you're in the room with the first rounders, when they're getting drafted and stuff like that, man, and you hear all these convos go, yeah, you understand real quickly that, yeah, this is not a support job. This is a you're grooming him to take your job job and you're either going to be okay with that and you're going to get your money and you'll be good and everybody can play along and be happy or we're going to move on from you because that's the first round that that's the guy that he's going to be the man so either you could train or we're going to bring somebody else in here to train him it's literally that and you either say yeah with a smile on your face or you hear the reports of how some of these other guys have responded and when they end up getting shipped out whether that's cut or traded. And we've also seen how that works out too. But that's definitely the conversation, man. And you go in there, how I let your head coach, how I let your GM, and they all tell you the same thing. Some decisions are bigger than us. Some decisions are made from upstairs. You already know what this is. Those are the convos that they give you. Those are the responses that they give you. And it doesn't matter what you bring up. So, yeah, it is not just the, oh, man, support the rookie, man. It's bad journalism. Unfortunately, it's not. I wish it was, though. I do. Because then it would go back to kind of like what you were saying. Man, just make it be, oh, you come in here, man. Do what you're supposed to do, bro. Like, it ain't that deep. If you rock with you, you rock with you. If you want to text you, text you. But if not, hey, don't be in your feelings. Don't take it personal. He's letting you know, man, I'm here to compete with you. It just isn't always that cut and dry. I wish it was, though. Fan Bradford, sorry for more Fields talk, but isn't it smarter to get him on our roster? I don't think uh, a vet will really push eight, and they're likely too expensive. So, I get what you're saying. Um, Because he's saying a vet that would be able to push Kenny is going to be too expensive, and they're not going to bring in something that isn't going to yeah, be good enough to actually push him. Yeah, I I think it's like that drop off. It's either mentioned our two guys that I, I think are at this point legitimate competition for Peggy. It would yeah. be uh Mason and Fields. Those yeah. would be my two. Mm-hmm. Well, I think you just go into the off season, open slate. Yeah. Best man win. Because everyone else, yeah, you're talking about like Tannehill or Darnold, some of these other dudes, it's like I, I want That's, them yeah. backup role. Right. Helping Kenny. Or it's Kirk and Russ and you we could said, you could frame it, yeah, frame it as yeah. a competition but not, but I, I think it's it'd be better to roll with Kenny in twenty twenty four if you're bringing in a guy like Tannehill or Darnold just to really yeah. see what your first round investments got. Yeah. And then yeah, you're right with a Wilson or Cousins, like you're just bringing them in there to the start Yeah. So those are like the two guys, unless that. I'm missing anyone. I think that that should be the open competition no, for those two names. Because I even told you, even when I threw out my dude Tyrod, I'm like, I'm not saying him to beat Kenny out. It yeah. was him to be the vet backup vet mentor. So once again, yeah, we those are the names. Yeah. Van Bradford. Drafting a Rattler or Milton is cool, but if eight flops, then it's another Restart. reset at quarterback. Right. The future is brighter with Fields and eight on our roster. Oh, I see what he's saying. Because he feels Rattler and Milton are cool if you wanted to have them here just for the sake of competition or the sake of pushing Kenny. But realistically, we don't think that those guys are long-term answers that are going to be better than what Kenny yeah, you're, currently you're is. Yeah, you're doing something next yeah. offseason anyway. Yeah, because with Milton, he's a project. And with Rattler, yeah, he's been up and down in college. That's so. very fair. Because, uh, yeah, let's say yeah. either or wins the competition, Pickett or Fields, and they flop the first month, month and a half. 
you don't at hate least it yeah back. at least <laughs> at least you get to see what the other one could do for yep, the rest you of the season. You don't hate it, you and then you, you really really got an answer. Yeah, you don't hate it. Uh, next that's one that's actually legit. Fair shout out to you, Fair and Bradford. Shout out. Our Barley 18, so we need a halfback three, a big body slot, and a kick returner. What if I could get you all three in one guy? Yeah, come Porter on, Porter L. Patterson. I already know what time you want. No Smith system, mm-hmm. fills three needs, should be cheap. This is easy, isn't it? No, nah, man, trust me. We're on the same page. My only concern is... Cadero, is, he, is he washed? Uh, uh, I don't think he's washed <laughs> because of his style. He's like, what, 35, 36? That's, yeah, he's, he is he's older, there. though. That's the only thing. He's older. But his last year... When we, he didn't do anything last year. No, no I don't know no, how much no, they no. got on the ball, but... That's what I was trying to see just in terms of his availability. Pull up games, play, turnovers. That's the big thing, because as he gets older, you want to see, all right, how much availability does he have? If he's, if he's only playing six, seven games, that's what makes you kind of back off of him. If he's still, you know... In, I think either or is a concern, though, right? No, 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 no. Because you can just talk about usage being, man, they wanted to go with Algier, they wanted to go with Bajan. And I just uh, he's not as old as I thought. 32 last year. Yeah. So, yeah, 14 games, had 15 touches rushing, okay. 181 yards, mm-hmm. zero touchdowns, receiving nine receptions, 38 yards, All one right. touchdown. Fumbles. Did he put it on the ground and then go to uh, special teams to see? One um, fumble. One fumble. Okay. I like that. Ball security. Then in terms of return stuff, what was he looking like? Uh, looks like seven kick returns last year as a whole. Okay. Touch paint any? No. 21.9 yards per return. Yeah, he's still bringing that thing out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't love it. Two years ago, I would have really loved it, but two years ago was when he was getting paid the most. But at the same time, you were bringing him in a part of a rotation with the Najee, with the Jalen Warren. What's the difference between that or watching Latavius Murray go to the Baltimore Ravens or even watching him go to Buffalo with the Bills. It's like he's still not the version that he was when he was, you know, one of the lead guys on his team, but a part of a rotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it wouldn't be the worst option for an RB3 because of some of that versatility. Yeah. That wouldn't be the worst option, really. Yeah. Because if we're talking about Godwin Igwebuke being our third running back, uh, I'd like to think Patterson's an upgrade there, but then he could give you some of the receiver stuff. So, yeah. It's not the worst idea. I'm I'm yeah. not going crazy over it like I would have been if we would have signed him, like you said, two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago, I liked him a lot. Cause I'd just be like, yeah, legit, good depth. Yeah. All right, good veteran presence. That's yeah. fine. I mean, so part of the group, though? Yeah. Like, I don't think he's beating out Jalen Warren. I don't think he's beating out Najee Harris. And that was, like, my thing at first was, like, all right, is he, what type of year is he coming off of? Where is he going to want touches and he's going to want to feel like he deserves more of a role? I don't think he's going to have that type of energy. But I do think that if you're bringing him in as the third guy, along with the familiarity of being an Arthur Smith system, but then what does that do to Calvin Austin? Eh. Because he does some of the gadgety stuff for Arthur Smith that Calvin Austin would be doing for us, essentially. They're just different body types. Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully Austin elevates enough where it- Yeah. You're just keeping Patterson there for depth and being that old mm-hmm. guy, you know? Yeah, if it, yeah. If yeah, because they use – that's how they use Cordell. Like, yeah, if it's be a serious back, conversation be between the Patterson spot, and Austin, they line him maybe, up all over the place. Yeah, maybe Austin's yeah. just not who we thought he was going to be. Yeah. Uh, Tony Daniel the second. Drake May is a skinnier athletic seven shrugging guys off and throwing 50-yard bombs into the hands of his receivers, bro. I mean, listen, he looks great. Right, a lot of these dudes look really great coming out of college. We just gonna find out in terms of when he gets to the NFL, man, if it's gonna translate. But um, trust me, man, they all supposed to look great coming out. That's why do you in this position? Why they even getting talked about? Shows you that Bailey Zappi take when he was coming out. We was looking at Bailey like, bro, why are you killing everybody out here, bro? Like, God dog, a little school phenom. They supposed to look great. All these dudes got talent, man. And trust me, Drake May is a legit prospect, man, legit. Joe Gerbers says, Moats Fark was hiding a different thing. If you know, you know. I don't even want to know, bro. Well, he, uh, I don't even he actually know. clarified that super comment by posting a regular comment underneath and, and uh-huh. says Fark was meant to say Drake. 
Oh, oh, I was like, I don't know who that is. I don't know what, what is what. I'm good. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Shit. <laughs> what is it, isn't Joe Gerbers the same guy that brought up the Drake conversation yeah, last time? Yeah, bro. I don't know, bro. He seems to be bro. steady on that topic. Yeah, he fishing for something. I ain't looking for it, though. I, he seems I, to be yeah. well informed, huh? Yeah, yeah that, 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 that's your homie, man. Y'all, yeah, I heard you was backstage with him, yeah. Yeah, y'all, y'all was kicking it. Yeah, whatever y'all do to pregame, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, AJ Martinez <laughs> gifted a most membership to Yo Young. Shout out to AJ Rockstar Life and Yo Young. Welcome to the upper room. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right, we got my man. So he was his next one. Day. AJ hey, Martinez. Yeah, <laughs> AJ Martinez says bring back seven for one year. We got a running offensive coordinator. So you want your boy to hand it off and plaques your pass. He trying to minimize your dog, man. I don't think that's the intent of this call. No, I'm messing with you. I'm just picking with yeah. you. But he's trying to minimize your dog, bro. Don't no, he's a sabotage seven guy. Mm-hmm. He's just saying Arthur Smith could actually maybe dial some, up, dial some stuff up to help seven yeah. in the offense as opposed to Canada where Ben had to overcome everything he was doing. <laughs> I get him. I get what AJ Martinez is saying. <laughs> I love it. Tony Daniel, the second most of you, Pete. TJ Tampa's film yet? I have not. No, 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 no. But now that I'm back, you know, I got you. Now, I hope it ain't nothing janky. Now, I'm about to say. Well, we got boots on the ground next week. Yeah, we do. You come on, man. You know what I'm saying, man? I'm going to find out. It's my first one, too, man. Well, I to the remote. My first one back in a non, you know, this is my job interview capacity. So, I'm actually looking forward to it, man. Man. When I went there last time, bro, I don't remember nothing. I was so locked in, bro. That was like the job interview of all job interviews. Joker. It says, draft Joe Melton. He's going to be the MVP next season. <laughs> Is it next season? Is this TG's burner? Joker. I thought he was, look, he still got to develop, man. We say he's like a project a little bit. He said next season. Jeez. <laughs> hey, man, that's going to be the coach of the year. And whoever, if you make that happen, all right. Tony Danny the second. Malachi Corley is our next Heinz Ward in the third. Yo, Tony Danny, you got all his players today. I like your energy. I like it. <laughs> AJ Martinez gifted a much membership to Tyler from the 334. Shout out to Tyler from the 334. Welcome to and the Joe upper is room. The upper room. And Joe Gerbis, welcome to the upper room. And AJ Martinez, shout out to you once again. Continue to be an absolute rock star at life, man. We do appreciate you from the heart, man. Okay, 11.49 a.m. All right. Now we get to that first topic. Boom. Sure. Talk about, you know, just some of the new coaching hires, man, to kind of reset and catch up with everything that was going on with that, man. Um, We did officially get a title for Mike Sullivan. Was the former QB coach the past couple of seasons. Obviously got bumped to uh, the play caller for game days once Matt Canada was fired. And now he is officially going to be the senior offensive assistant um. All right, I'll just focus on him first, and then we we'll talk about the other. Who were even the other guys? I don't even remember. So Matt Baker, he's the other cat we hired on. Um, we, he's another offensive hired, assistant. Like a strength coach. Yeah, we hired a whole bro. It's like a whole rack of cats, man. Phil uh, Matus, he's the strength coach. So we'll talk about them all. So um, so yeah, Sullivan's the big one. Though, yeah, so him back. so Mike Sullivan coming back, obviously as the um, as the senior offensive assistant. I do like that number one because you're having a guy that is a former coordinator in this league, a guy that showed last year, even in a play calling capacity that you could add on to his role. And he was still able to elevate and excel. When we look at how Mason Rudolph played, or even how Kenny Pickett played of the three quarterbacks, two of them played some of their best football we've ever seen them play. And only one guy struggled and that was Mr. Trubisky. So for me, when I think of uh, Mike Sullivan, that is a guy that I think you want around you just in the sense of he might see something different or when we're watching film, what he might be able to uh, just add to the conversation. I think all of those things are benefits for, you know, the staff. When you're talking about Arthur Smith, you're only as good as the guys that you're working with. It doesn't matter if you're leading your team as trash. Now you're trying to do all the extra. So it's like you got to have dudes around you that are talented. So I think for him, you know, Mike Sullivan coming back or bringing him back in that role, 
is good. Now, in terms of why he's the senior offensive assistant is because they also brought in a guy, uh, Matt Baker. Now, Matt Baker was with uh, Arthur Smith also in Atlanta, but he was their special teams coach down there. But he is an offensive guy, former NFL quarterback um, from Buffalo Bill also. Shout out, shout out. You know, I got to shout that out. But um, he's an offensive assistant. So for me, man, you're bringing in another guy that, number one, has played the position. We talk about in the NFL, what is this? A quarterback what's, driven league. He's he's an offense. He's an offensive assistant. Just that's it. Yeah. So Sully is the senior offensive assistant. He is just and then We're Mike Matt Baker. Yeah, but why is it important? We talk about the quarterback position. We have a young quarterback potentially with another younger, inexperienced quarterback in Mason or somebody that we're bringing in in the draft or whatever. So you're bringing in another guy, former NFL quarterback. He's been in this league. Even if he didn't have a great career in terms of, yo, I've set record stuff like that. When you're playing in this league and you're around it for multiple years, you pick up certain things. You just understand certain dynamics. And I think for him being in here, that is an asset to a Kenny Pickett. I think it's an asset to a Mason Rudolph. We also brought in Tom Arth, who we already talked about yeah. as the QB coach, but he's another what? Former NFL QB. So when you're thinking about this staff right now, you got two former NFL QBs in Matt Baker and Tom Arth. You got a former NFL offensive coordinator in Mike Sullivan. Mm -hmm. You got Arthur Smith, another former dude, right? Proven OC. This version of this offensive staff this year in comparison to what we've been having – to me, I think really should help out this quarterback position a lot more now Absolutely. because of that. And, and we're not making them, yo, you go be a linebacker coach. You're going to be a tight ends coach. No, you're offensive assistant. That means if my quarterback needs extra work, where do you think you're spending that extra time at? There. Senior offensive assistant. If my quarterback or as a whole, we don't like how this is looking, now you can come and help me. These are big time, to me, positions where you're – adding to that staff in a positive way. It's not just a fluff thing. It's, it's impactful. You know what I mean? Yeah, Mike Sullivan was up for yeah, yeah, offensive man. coordinator. Jobs. Absolutely. He, he was interviewing for them this offseason, yeah, man. Yeah, and he, he was good for his time here, not only yeah. as a QB coach, but and yeah, everyone has said glowing things about him, not mm -hmm. only here, but when, whenever he was with the Giants, with Eli Manning, he yep. was doing stuff in Tampa. But, yeah, I mean, you, you got a guy that was an OC back in the day, but mm -hmm. with his work that he did here over these last seven weeks replacing Matt Canada, him and Falcon replacing Matt Canada, like it got him actual opportunities for potential OC job. Like it, that's yeah. not nothing. And then no, you, you just bring him man. back on the staff. I don't care what it was. Whatever title you wanted to give him, I think he's, he's going to be a definite asset, especially because of his familiarity with Kenny, right. too. Like He'll be able mm -hmm. to probably help translate some of the Arthur Smith stuff to Kenny and just be there as a sounding board for him. No, 100%. And in terms of just the continuity for Arthur Smith, Tom Arth, Matt Baker, both worked with him before. Both are familiar with him. With Sullivan. Yeah, or not with Sullivan, with Smith. Uh, with Smith. You know what I mean? So it's like, at least you still got some continuity. That's with that. good. That's what yeah. I like to Because mm -hmm. remember whenever we were talking about yep. the new OC, let's say a month ago, before we actually made the hire, I wanted us to bring in a dude. Mm-hmm. And have him just run the whole offense yeah. and bring in his own guys from the These top down. These are all down. his dudes, man. That's what I want. So, so it's good. So Matt Baker, Tom Arth, Phil Matuz, the strength and conditioning coach, and even the assistants, they all are coming from Arthur Smith down in Atlanta. That's all his guys. So when we say that the new field will be, you know, these are his guys, that's definitely the case. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm just going to pull up. With Phil Matus, how long he was? Uh, let me see. Let me see. Yeah, because I think the only holdover we have right now for Faulkner's back too. Yeah, Running Faulkner's back. The only holdover for even strength and conditioning was Garrett Guimont. They cleaned out like even the sports, like nutrition, the <laughs> intern. Yeah, bro, I seen the assistant assist. And I was like, roll that day, bro, they got you too? Well, I'm good with that, whatever. Yeah, man, they they, they, they ain't waste no time with them cats, bro. They was like, yo, all oh, y'all got to get got. So, yeah. We needed a switch up no matter what. And if, yeah. yeah, those guys are just the collateral damage. It is what it is. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's definitely, now that's definitely the vibe, though. I was, as I was reading, I'm like, dang, bro, y'all got him too? Like, sheesh. Like, okay. Yeah, they they ain't leave a stone unturned, man. They ain't leave a stone unturned. Yeah. 
but I like it. But and even um, but going back to the uh, the Phil Matus, who's the uh, strength and conditioning coach, um, he's another guy had experience at Boston College, had experience at Ohio State. Also, um, he played at Villanova. Shout out! I don't like the fact that shout out Villanova because he actually played there when I was at JMU and they beat us twice. Damn. Yeah, sick. One time we was undefeated, and the other time so he was the quarterback. Or no, 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 you're talking no, about no, different no, guy. No, this no, is the no, strength. No, no. Is, he was, he yeah, was like an he O-line. Was O-line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he played up there. Yeah, yeah, man. Him, shoot, and our uh, player development dude still. Yeah, shout out to uh, the Daryl Scott, man. Um, or Daryl Young, excuse me on that, man. But them Villanova cats, man. Yeah, yeah. It's a rough time. It's a rough time. I'm sorry to hear. Yeah, yeah, I don't like him. But I like the energy, though. You know what I mean? But he was at Ohio State, so it's like, yo, coming from bigger schools. Now, he wasn't always football. He did some of the Olympic sports stuff. But as a whole, it's like, yo, when you're at a bigger program, it's still it's a certain feel, a certain type of athletes you're used to dealing with, which are going to be more aligned to what we're getting when you talk about the professional ranks. So I do like that. And um, and I forgot it was another cat um that has a little bit more experience coming from the HBCU ranks. He's actually going to be the sports science uh, guy as well. Just in terms of when you're talking about building out the roster or building out your coaching staff, we know we got players coming from all over. So it's like you just want to have dudes that understand how to connect with different guys to just get the most out of them. Because as much as this game is physical – it's just as much mental, and you want to figure out, man, how to get everybody in the best space they could be in to be their best players out there. I think this is a great question. Kenneth Moses asked, Moses, when does KP8 get the new playbook? Shoot, he probably already got it. Okay. Yeah, honestly, like most people, you have to wait until OTAs, right? So um, in April, usually April 18th is when, you know, phase one OTA starts, when guys can finally come back to the building and start working out. Most of the time, you'll start, you know, getting those conversations happening. And then you'll see how high you are up on the totem pole. If you're one of the guys that they are banking on, you'll get yours a little bit earlier. But after that, everybody's going to get it when the OTA, like, practices start or even rookie mini camp. After the draft and rookie mini camp, all, like, all those rookies are going to have the playbook first. Typically, the rookies get it before the vets because they oh, showed wow. the rookie mini camp. But when you're the quarterback, you get it before anybody else because you're the most important player. So that's why it's like... How much conversations do you think they're having about the playbook? Like, is there some um, Zoom meetings? I think to an extent, it depends on how much they're invested in Kenny. <clears throat> because if you love Kenny and you want Kenny to be your guy, then you're going to make sure that Kenny is heavily involved in the process of putting together the recipe. What do you like? What don't you like? What calls make you feel comfortable? What calls don't make you feel comfortable? Like, those are legitimate conversations that happen when you got the guy. But if you don't think he's the guy, you think it's, you know, a little bit more up in the air, you're like, hey, bro, you, you worry about your offseason, take some time away, get right, you know, get in the lab, and then I'm going to hit you up when it's time. They could do that, too. And, it, you know, both work. Both ways work. I've been on the side where it's like, yo, you go through these different changes. I think it was only one time in my career where I kind of got the heads up about a playbook early. The rest of them times it was, bro, you gonna learn this when everybody else coming here and learn this. And you just take it for what it is. You know, you gotta know you're on the organization. You're like, bro, I'm not the hundred million dollar dude. I'm not the franchise player, so I'm not gonna be treated like that. But I understand what the scenario is. But when you see them dudes, when you see a Mario Williams, you're like, okay, that's the hundred million dollar franchise guy. It's a reason why he's gonna get that play before everybody else. When you got the quarterback the first round, even if he ain't produced all the way, it's like, yo. It's a reason why he got that before everybody else. Because they're going to try to get him dudes the best chance. So for Kenny, if they truly want him to have his best chance, he's already going to be involved in some of these conversations. Either way, he yeah, he's got already going to be involved. Book. Yeah, because they're going to want to make sure he's the most comfortable. Now, they're going to have some tweaks, sure. But the meat and potatoes of Arthur Smith's playbook, I'm sure if you play for him in Tennessee, is carryover. Because yeah. that's it's just their guys. Like Dick LeBeau is like I don't I don't have to play for Dick LeBeau again. I know his defense. Keep up. I know his defense. Coach, I know his defense. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a certain guys just just know it. So with that, it's like yeah, he's gonna have certain things that are his baby concepts. Like this is what he truly believes in. Kenny's should already have that, or should be getting that really soon. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you don't make them type of dudes wait on that and he's the only guy on the roster right yeah now. you don't make him wait. the only quarter yeah. because we caught match because what, what, free agent. what is the benefit of making him wait no no there is zero benefit yeah man. now it's just you yeah. know how much detail or him right. and smith going over yeah it's like you don't have we're not having meetings right now 
but you can already start looking over these concepts. So now when April does hit, we're not starting at day one, ground zero. You're already coming in with a general understanding of my scheme. You already have a general understanding of my language, how I communicate it. So now we're not having to go through 30 different hurdles just to get you comfortable. You've already crossed off some of those things in your own time. Now I'm going to give you the fine tune and now let me teach you what you've already been seeing with a little bit more detail. Kenny's already getting that edge. That's how it should Stock be, up. man. That's how it should be. Kenny, and now from him, just Kenny be a professional. Are, uh, yeah. They're they're in fear right now. Yeah, but for, in for the Kenny fetal position. For Kenny, now it's becoming, hey man, be a professional. You gonna get this, man? Make sure you looking at what you're supposed to be looking at. He's on. doing good so, so far. Right. I haven't heard from him. Stay at all. quiet. Yep. You don't need He's to be out great. here doing a whole bunch of interviews, <laughs> making noise, man. You're in the lab. You're quiet and in the lab. That's what you need to do. And when they see your play, let your play do the talking, man. Yeah. Uh, did Ben get Haley's playbook early, you think? <laughs> ben, I'm afraid so. Hey, hey, ben was probably on the call when they hired Haley. Hey, hey, Todd, we just wanted to let you know, congratulations. You're, I selected you as office coordinator. You're like, dang, all right, bro. Shout out to you, Seven. As this is, that's a whole other animal, man. That's well, a whole other animal, that, bro. Well, you know that's not what happened. I know, though, right? I know. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was Rooney that like, uh, handpicked he, Haley. He ben, said I wanted him. Because, yeah, Arians was Ben's guy. Uh huh. Wait, so you got to so save my guy, I'm just wondering, did Haley send Ben the playbook and yeah. Ben never opened the package and just <laughs> said, hey, I'll wait till it's yours? Hey, man, I'll figure it out when I figure it out. I don't care about you. Because if I play bad, they're going to fire you anyways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so we talked about the coaches. Do you have anything more with them? Um, no, no, but just as a whole, man, I just think that they're doing a great job in terms of the staff this go around. Oh, and yeah. making sure that it's going to be the best situation for Kenny. When you start talking former quarterbacks, former NFL quarterbacks, former NFL coaches, all on your staff, you've heard me say it too, like numerous times, man. Former coaches, man, I feel like are great to be in the building. Higher end dudes or even former players in certain cases because the communication, how they give and receive information, it just is different. You don't have to be a great player. But if you play in this thing long enough, man, what you're going to learn, the details, and all the things that come with that, like I said, it's invaluable. You know what I mean? So I think for Kenny, this they're they're they load the deck for him, man. They like, yeah, we're gonna give you, we give you all the pieces we need, man. <laughs> now we're gonna see are these pieces gonna exclusively be for Kenny? Because we know they can still do the whole headshot thing and go up top. You know what I mean? We know that. And it's not impossible. And that's the other part of why it's you know, so many convos happen. We'll talk about some of the QB stuff in a little bit, but just as a whole, man, I do think that the team top down, man, I like their mindset or their intent for it, making sure that that position has all of the resources needed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you want me to hit these two super? Uh, yeah, again? let's hit them real quick real and then quick. we'll go to the next one. Yeah. AJ Martinez says, 5'5, five, five, you're bad. LOL. <laughs> Mr. Diggler, you know what I'm saying. LOL. 5'5 five, five is acting like 5'2 right now. Hey, 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 look, 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 man. You know my favorite time of the day is 552 anyways, okay, player, player? I'm a 552 type oh, of wow. guy. You know that. Come on, man. 552. I, 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 I try to chill. I, I'm going to call 552 most time. Oh, no, man. I've been on that. When I came to Pittsburgh, that was like my thing. But like I, I'm low-key because I don't know how people feel about the Bills stuff. So that's why I was like, yo, 555 for the giveaway. It was always 555. But my giveaway, my, man, my OG time, well, 552, bro. Mm. Yeah, because I'm like, I got my 5, 5, my 52. Yeah. And the numbers flow perfectly. You got that as a tattoo? Not yet, but it was already in the works. Yeah, it's yeah, not a bad trust idea. me, bro. Like, when I tell you that's my thing, man, like, yeah. That's why I was so pissed when I got that 93 out in, out in Arizona. <laughs> I'm like, bro, this number stank, man. What am I going to do with this, man? They had to make gang related. Nah, Trey, kill up. Nah, play. All right. So it's all good. Uh, I was gonna say maybe there's a way you could do the 552 93 second. You nah. can't. It's 60 seconds in a minute though. No, nah, I, I just did nine minus three to six. Shout out to Drake, six guy, because I was in Buffalo started out. Okay, and you know, spent a lot of time in Toronto. There you go. Yeah. Okay, it all connects. It's always connected. Like 23. Come on, man. Tony Daniel the second question notes. If Mike Wallace resigns, do we win another Super Bowl? And does AB have the career surge like he did? Probably not. If you think about that time, that was a big part of what opened the door for AB to even get more targets, more touches, and grow into the yeah. AB that we kind of knew him as. It was Mike leaving. Because I remember before Mike left, we were like, AB was nice as heck, but Mike was the one that scared everybody because of how fast he was. Yeah. Yeah. But once he left, that's when AB really just 
went to a whole. That's another. a great question. I don't know if Mike Wallace is the catalyst for us winning another Super Bowl or not. But I yeah, I don't. I don't know if AB him, has though. the same career search. Yeah, it, yeah, it helps. I think us. we win with if Mike is here though. Mike yeah. taking tops off them defenses, bro. It definitely helps. Yeah, but like that, I didn't think offense was like the biggest issue yeah. for us though. But you also had seven with the receivers, and that is also well. What made you it know what? what? I'll say this: Mike Wallace a little bit more reliable than Martavis Bryant. Yeah, so, yeah. There's that. Mike Wallace yeah. and AB. I think uh, we see some more continuity there in the like, receiver room. I love Martavis as a player, <laughs> but Mike was the better player. If we talk it like just being available, yeah. it's just straight up being it's, available. It's consistency. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> Mike Wallace is more consistent, man. Yeah. He gonna consistently run by you and you be like, bro, why you dang, why you so fast? Like this don't even make sense. We know you're not gonna do nothing else. One trick pony, but you graded that one trick. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. The one for me that I think guarantees us another Super Bowl uh would have been whenever we traded San Antonio Holmes. Because Respect. we traded Holmes before that I think it was the year before that yeah. Packers Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And that's what we were missing, man. We we were missing him late in the game. I think Emmanuel Sanders went down with an injury mm-hmm. in, in that one, and we had to rely on like Katri, Hines, who yeah. was in the late stages of his career, mm-hmm. and Randall L was out there in the Super Bowl. It's like, geez, yeah. oh man, dude. And then Mike Wallace. I think that's all we really had. Katri we was traded after, home because like, Katri, Katri, Katri was, was after the Super Bowl, or he was after, he was yeah, after yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. We needed homes, man. We needed yeah. homes. We needed a, a go-to guy for Ben out there. Yeah. Respect. And Wallace actually, Wallace was good for us oh, good in that player, run. Man. Yeah, he yeah. was good. It was his last year with us that was just a huge disappointment. That's yeah. when he was coming up on the contract. Mm-hmm. He dropped so many balls. It was it was yeah. egregious. So many. There was a time point in time where I thought Wallace was gonna be what AB Baby was. was supposed uh-huh. to. Yeah, he just he never Bro, lived up. He never got the route running right. Man, he had young money out here. Was it was it Emmanuel Sanders? Is he gonna be the guy? Is it Mike Wallace? Is he gonna be the guy? Is it AB? Is he gonna be the guy? Trust me, man. We won't we won't fans of it, but I liked them because it was you know I like the draft class and stuff like that in terms of A B and uh Manuel San- Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, I liked them as receivers. It yeah. did always piss me off though for like Ben's first like ten, oh, eleven, twelve about years, that, no big body. Yeah. where he he never got a a big body receiver. Uh, he got out sport, there. It, it sport cars out there, bro. We got a glimpse of it with Plexico yeah. in his rookie year. Then he goes to sign with the yeah. Giants, and then it was just Heinz Ward. We draft Santonio. Uh, San Antonio. Maybe you get a glimpse. Awesome with draft ten. pick. Yeah. But then all these other receivers we get yeah. is A B, Sanders, Mike Wallace. And then you're right, yeah. Martavis. We get a little glimpse of it, but a little glimpse, that's it. Never get the consistent yeah. guy. We tried with Lima Swede, but he sucked. You got you a glimpse of it with Chase Claypool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you always get a glimpse exactly. of it. It's like, yo, why is it so hard to get the big bodies? Yeah, like he never yeah. had, you know, an Andre mm-hmm. Johnson. Like mm-hmm. no big had, bodies. Peyton had sport. Reggie Wayne, Tom Brady had boy Randy got two Moss. seaters, all two seater receivers. Like, yo, all y'all boys barely six feet. Like you five eleven, you five ten, you five Breeze nine had and Marquise a half. Colston and Jimmy Graham. Down yeah, there. Mike. Yeah, they go Mike Thomas, Michael Thomas, Mike Tom, big receiver. Yeah. Yeah. Even Peyton with uh, the Broncos, uh-huh. Demarius Thomas. Yeah. Eric Decker was a bigger dude. Mm-hmm. Farron Bradford, bigger free agent need, cornerback, defensive lineman, inside linebacker. I say D-line. I disagree. Mm. I, I just go, think bigger need in general is cornerback and inside yeah, linebacker. Yeah, I would say corner. Um, corner, inside linebacker, definitely. And in terms of how I would address it, I'd still lean corner for free agency just because I like proven pieces on the back end, man. That's, to me, outside of quarterback, corner is, like, the toughest position to, like, physically play. Just because you're having to go up against the best athletes on the field in terms of the wide receivers, and your job is to react to them in full speed, bro. And you can't hit them certain ways. You can't touch them certain ways. Yeah. So when you got a guy that finally shows that they're, you know, guys and they can play this game at a high level, yeah, to me, man, I'm like I would always address corner or I lean more corner in free agency. So that's kind of how I look at it. Corner inside linebacker, D-line third. Yeah. That's it for Supers right now. All right. What's oh, that do it. Docket? Well, hit that like button one time for the culture. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. No? Um, and let me go through the shout outs one more again, Deke, just so I can make sure I do this because this is this like is one for of the, the giveaway. Yeah, you know I mean, it's one of the things you're supposed to do, right? It's like, yo, you got to keep talking just about it. Just in case, right? Oh, dude, there was a giveaway I did last year. I think I had four or five people as winners they, they yeah. were for different types of awards uh-huh. and whatnot i think only two people like hit me up about it serious so i wasn't stressing it was like all right yeah. if you don't if you don't want to hit me up about the giveaway i'm just gonna i'm gonna keep the money or whatever it was right. and i'll save it for next time 
It'd be like that. Trust me, we didn't, it's yeah, been a cool. giveaway or two where it's like, yo, you ain't gonna hit me back. All right. <laughs> Just don't worry about it. Then. All right, I just pocket it and give it away. Somebody else. All right, but once again, man, we did have a couple of giveaways. Man, shout out to Beach Boy Molly. He won the giveaway for us right here, man. On the Steelers channel, man. We talked about the terrible towel, the signed photo in the book. All right, so Beach Boy Molly, whenever you tap in, send that email motes at gmail dot com. All right. We also said on the shoe channel, kicking it with moats, where y'all see me talking my fly sneak ahead. I can't help it. I love shoes. But on that channel, we're giving away a pair of uh, Air Jordan 1 mids, um, the uh, Magic Embers, part of the 1,000 subscriber giveaway on that channel. Salute to everybody that's rocking with me over there. And I have seen a lot of y'all from this channel pull up over there as well, man. Salute y'all. But that giveaway is on March 14th. All right. My birthday. The big three six, like three six mafia. Okay. Then we also said, uh, shout out to the uh leukemia and lymphoma society, right? Said we did that video with the kids from South Fayette, man, talking about you know what they're doing in terms of the student uh visionaries of the year campaign. Got that link up there in the com uh in the community page as well as the video showing a little bit of the interview talking to one of the uh, the kids who actually had a bout with Hodgkin's lymphoma, same cancer that James Conner had, but overcame it as well, man. So, like I said, a lot of y'all have already been tapping in, but if y'all feel the urge and y'all want to support them, got the link and everything like that on that video and in the community page so y'all can support them also. All right. I'm trying to think. Did I forget anything? I feel like I got all my checks off. Right, right. I feel like I'm doing this thing right. Let's check marks. Thanks, so. Check marks. It's the same right, right? It's, it felt good. So, they hit that like button one more time for the coach, and don't forget to subscribe. All right. Bam. Now we're good. Okay, okay, okay. Then we got a couple supers that just came back, and then after that, we'll get to that next topic, baby. What is it? Just uh, quarterback talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. No, ain't nothing crazy. It's Friday, D. You know ain't working hard, baby. It's Friday. It's wakey-bakey. We right in the heart of the bake, and then when that end, it's going to be time to ever, ever spin the block and re-up, okay? Yeah. How wifey drive More relaxing. You know what I'm saying? Then we go get the kids later on and be like, hey, wifey, you driving today. I like you better when I'm in the passenger seat. All right? <laughs> Is that man code? <laughs> it, 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 it does feel weird. That's why it's like I have to justify it. For me to be in the past, it's like, yo, get I'm drunk being or smart. Get really high. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm like, I have to be really smart. <laughs> Otherwise, it feels really weird. And I love wifey. Wifey can drive. It's just like, it just feels weird. And I'm like, I'm not superstitious, bro. But I got this weird mindset of, I think a Biggie Smalls, Tupac Shakur, and Mac Dre, and all three got killed in the passenger seat of their vehicles. So I'm like, ah, I can't ride in that passenger seat too much, bro. Don't put me in the passenger seat. Now, granted, D, you know how I live. I'm not doing anything where any aggressiveness like that should ever come in my circle. No. Nah. But in my mind, I'm like, hey, man. Very I just, peaceful. I just don't want to put myself like that because that's what happened to them. So, yeah. That's, yeah. I can't just, oh, just it's, it's weird, bro. Don't be driving in bad areas, right? Yeah. I'm just like, hey, just, ah. So for her, it's like, yo, I... I really got to be on one for her to be whipping me, man. I'm just, that's my energy, bro. But that's the plan today. Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. That's the it's, plan. It's on the schedule. It's Friday, bro. It's the freaking weekend, baby. I'm about to have me some fun. Come on, now. Nah. First question. Oh, yeah, Tom here. Jade. You know what? You know what? That Mac Dre. Come on, man. Come on, man. Mmm. What's your thin face look like? Mmm. Mmm. Like you smell something, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Where you going there today? We go chill. We go chill. Tony Daniel second. Y'all think Jeezy Jr. got snubbed like what? Uh, he means Peasy Jr. I think. Yeah, I was like, where did Young Jeezy? I know Jeezy dropped the yeah, album, he actually but made I don't, another comment. I don't yeah. think he got snubbed. No. Mm -mm. Uh, it, no, he didn't get snubbed like what? No. Yeah. I think if he would have played the full season, like 100 percent of the snaps as CB one, and been locked down like he pretty much was when he did get the starting role then yeah i think there would have been way more legitimate conversations for him winning defensive rookie of the year yeah it would have been like in the in the sauce gardener vein yeah i just think they started a little bit slower with him and i don't fault it remember i was saying i thought that that was a good idea in terms of how they were gonna um handle him i'd rather be a slow rollout than you do it too fast but that did to me hurt him at the end when we're talking about the awards because his sample size it starts yeah, almost it took him, a it took month. him like five or six weeks yeah to become like the full took him almost starter. a month into the year man so that's the only thing but i think going forward because of him being a finalist and getting the recognition that he did receive and in playing a safe position i do think he will be in these conversations for pro bowls and potentially all pros going forward because of the start that he's given us but he obviously has to keep up that play but in terms of yeah. when you talk about Don't how be do you, 
yeah, you can't do that. And I love Artie, but you can't do that. But that's a big part of the difference between, you know, guys getting those Pro Bowl nods, guys getting those all pro nods, guys getting that recognition. You got to do something early on to at least get your name out there. And I do feel like he's done that to start his career out. So salute him on that. Yeah, they got graphics for him. Yeah. Like you're yeah, seeing graphics man. pop up week yeah. in and week out there in the NFL season. Right. So I'm like, yo, you, you targeted done, this many times. You've made this many some noise. Yeah. And they throwing some names out there. Oh, Devontae Adams. Yep. Oh, they throwing. Hopkins. So it's like, okay, when they're going to throw them names out there with you, it, it's twofold. We're going to love it. You're going to get notoriety, but it's also going to put a target on you because dudes are going to want to take that up off of you now. They're gonna want to be the ones to have that first hundred yard game on you. They're gonna be the one. They're gonna want to be the guys to get that first, you know, all head tap on them. So that's what comes with it. But he knows that, and yeah, I'm excited to see him, you know, address that challenge. I was laughing too, bro, because uh, my man Rod Dolly he called me out. He's like, so uh, since I don't want to ride in the passenger seat because I was talking about I don't want to get hit, you know. He's like, yeah, so you just gonna let wifey go? Let wifey get hit? That's messed up. I was well, like, yo, yeah, why you gonna say it like that, man? Yeah, that's, cool. that's why I asked. Is it man? I was, I was like, you, 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 to, to an extent, you, the way you make it sound like that, yeah, yeah. I mean, what you, what well, you, like you be said, it's being safe. If you're yeah. in a, a certain on, state, you, you shouldn't be driving. Yeah. You're being smart all, out man. here. You're actually helping out society. I, I'm being, being proactive. Seat. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to be proactive. That's it, man. Yeah. Let's go, you dub. Mitch Keller got a five year deal with the Bucks. Oh, shout out. Let's go. Yeah, we're paying some people. I like that. There, yeah, there's still like some that. other guys out there, like that Trevor Bauer. They might be good this year. I, I saw their over-under. Didn't we talk about this? Yeah, it's up in did. the 70s now. Which is higher than it was last year. It's yeah. increased the past couple of years. Yeah. Cruz didn't even play at all. That, that's the other thing. Mm-hmm. Like we, we, we get him back. We lost him. Did our, the first, I'm not going to say we did amazing, but at least we hit yeah. the over on the over-under. We lost under like the first titles. month of the season last year. Yeah. yeah. And we were cooking, too. Mm-hmm. We were in first place in the NL at one point. Mm-hmm. That always it typically happens. We teeter the off. Season. Yeah. We're either in the 500 range where we look like we could be in contention for a wild card, yeah. or we do, like, really good. And we're like, mm-hmm. oh, wow, we're first in the NL Central, and then drops off really quickly once, like, May and June comes around. Yeah. And then all-star break, we're back to, like, the same old bucks. Mm-hmm. They might be all right this year. They might be. Hopefully. Man, I forgot it was franchise tag season in football. Looking up at this day going screen, seeing some of these dudes, they talking about Christian. Uh, a couple uh, weeks. Yeah. I was like, yo. Man, we don't have anyone. Is- no one to worry about here. <laughs> Who we tag? I, I, Levi Wallace is our, Levi Wallace or Mason Rudolph is our most prolific free agent right now. Oh, which we know? have zero to worry about. We're good. About We're good. Tag. We ain't tagging that. We good. Keep the tags this year, Mr. Rudy. Just, they only waste the tags. Just keep them. Yeah. Hell no. <laughs> Tony Daniel the second. Oh yeah, he that's he's clarifying he meant peasy instead of Jeezy. Oh high respect. Deep Ride ninety nine, eight deep modes, first time chat. Two questions. What do you think Calvin needs to work on to be a better player? And what role you think he plays? Let me answer this real quick. Uh route running, right? <laughs> if we go drill about it, that's what keeps him from elevating, you know. Up hey, the roster. Hey, you were but, uh, you were the one on that train. <laughs> don't get me in trouble, man. I don't want no you problems were on with that nobody. Train. You were trying to warn listen. Us. I don't want no problems with anybody. Y'all attack me. I, I'm innocent. Okay, I'm just gonna sit here, put my he hands like in my a good pocket. Route runner with his college. Hey, shit. look. Hey, look. I was told he ran routes like amazing at Memphis, and Sauls Gardner even said that that was his toughest guy to card. So I get it, bro. Don't get on me. I don't want no problems with nobody. All right. But yeah, Could he get bigger though too. I, I don't, I don't know, bro. It's it's a strong possibility. Beef up like Tyreek. It's a strong possibility that I would agree. I I do think that the route running needs to be more refined. I think that you know he could do that, and it's not always an easy task. But I do think it's something that is very obtainable through hard work. Just because I've seen the guys that we deem as elite route runners, and elite route running isn't always correlated with elite physical attributes. Calvin already has an elite attribute, though. So if I'm having the conversation with Calvin, I'm looking at it one of two ways. We can either take the approach of, you know, you're going to focus on your route running and we're going to refine that. But I also take the similar approach that I would have said with Mike Wallace. You got something that a lot of these dudes don't have. And that is you can go this way faster than 99% of the dudes that are walking this earth right now, man. Be great at that. Ted Ginn Jr. played 10 plus years in this league doing what? It's just being this faster. He's faster this way. Mike Wallace, he's just faster this way. 
We talk about some of these dudes where it's like, yo, we know that they're a one-trick pony, but if they can develop, now it's a Tyreek Hill. But if it doesn't, we still can live with a Marquise Goodwin who's still been playing in this league now because he has Olympic speed and he can do this. <laughs> we didn't see him in Buffalo. We didn't see him in, what, San Fran. We didn't see him in Seattle. We didn't see him in Cleveland. We didn't see him in Chicago. Why? Because he could do that. So for Calvin, it's like, yo, yeah, improve the route running, focus on the route running. But just remember what brings you, what you bring to the table. Not everybody is 6'6", six, six, can jump out the gym. Not everybody is going to be willing to, you know, play the who's going to go to sleep the day game. But at the same time, not everybody can be that sonic speed hedgehog just running past everybody out there either. So don't lose sight of what got you here. We didn't draft you because you were just some elite route runner with all these elite attributes. We drafted because you was the fastest dude at the combine, man. Because when you got the ball in your hands, you run past people. So focus on running past people. Now, does that mean you got to get a little bit better release off the line versus press? Or does that mean schematically, Arthur Smith, man, just protect him. Stack alignment, bunch alignment, motion alignment. So he's never getting hands put on him at the line of scrimmage. Both ways work. Deshaun Jackson, we see them beat you off the line. We see you motion Deshaun Jackson. We see you bunch release Deshaun Jackson. Stack release Deshaun Jackson. Line up in the slot. What's the difference? Deshaun was fired. Deshaun wasn't no elite route runner, though. No, he was never an elite route runner. But he knew what he brought to the table. Stupid speed. And he knew that my speed is going to make you scared of me. So now I got a vertical and I definitely got a stop route. And his stop, bro, he can catch it. He going to wiggle you and now that can get freaky. But that was his version of route running. Or let me deep over you, run away from your leverage. Yeah. Nothing crazy. So it's like for Calvin, I'm telling the exact same thing, bro. You ain't got to go out here and become Antonio Brown overnight and have the best feet in and out your breaks. Nah, we want you to improve it, sure. But what you need to remember, bro, you got this weapon that's called speed, stupid speed. Not a lot of people got that, man. That's fair. So don't lose sight of that, bro. You don't need to become this big, beefy dude because that's not you just yet. If you develop into that, sure. But right now, you a fast guy, bro. Be fast. How does one stay fast is the question. <laughs> well, he's a track guy, so I do feel like for him, that's like a part of his makeup. Yeah, as like, I say, isn't that natural that way, already? Yeah, yeah. Now, you can improve your speed. For guys like myself, I was a part of the I'm not afraid to go to sleep crowd. So I had to improve my speed crowd, which meant drop weight and get stronger lower body. And then from there, it gets smarter. Because if you're smarter, you can always look faster because you're going to get to where you need to be without wasted, mov- weight, without wasted movement. And then another trick on camera, you wear high white socks. So anytime I was in practice, always high white socks. just make Absolutely. you look faster on camera, bro. Yeah. my f- Listen. I know AB was fast, slow. but he looked yeah, way faster. Yeah, you look way faster, bro. Rock that look. It's times with the white socks, you be like, bro, you faux faux. You be like, nah, it look it look clean though. <laughs> I keep them clean. It's white, it's a white socket, bro. Yeah. So it's all that's the little a, details. Yeah, all the a, little, that's a good suggestion. It matters, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it just matters. I don't mind that. Sometimes you just gotta. It's, just, it's a feel. It's like yo, he just looks faster. I don't know if he's really running fast. It just looks that way though. I mean, simple way for Calvin to improve his route running is link up with Deontay over the offseason. Get with that route agree. guard, right? Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. And honestly, it's a ton of route specialists, footwork specialists that are doing their thing and have been doing their thing for plenty of years, you know? So whether you're working with a uh, a Deontay Johnson with the route guy, whether it's the footwork king, I mean... We got to do, I mean, where you want to go? You want to go to Texas? You want to go to Florida? You want to go to, to, to L.A.? You got guys everywhere you need. Essentially, I don't think you got nothing up north, nothing really up this way. You, you got to go down south with the speed guys. These are the lifters and big body dudes up north. Right. Yeah. Speed dudes is always in the warm weather places. Florida, Miami, Cali. But it ain't hard to find, bro. You can pull up an IG. I'm sure one of your dudes that you might follow just playing on other teams is going to have a dude, man. So it's like. You can definitely accomplish that. But I still go back to Calvin, man. You a fast dude, bro. Don't have a loose sight of that. Yeah, I maybe, see you work your releases, but maybe be just fast, bro. Uh, having Arthur Smith in the house yeah. is gonna help Calvin Austin. Yeah, be fast though, bro. Be fast. Keep being fast. Okay, we got let's go you dub. Want to know what games Bradshaw was watching off of his comments saying eight needs more weapons. The days of having a Hall of Fame team around a quarterback are long over. 
He's calling out Brad. He say, he say, Terry, just because you had a Hall of Fame squad, don't mean that everybody can have a Hall of Fame squad. All right? Because that is part of what you even said yourself of why you knock Bradshaw's four rings over Ben's two rings. And Bradshaw having an MVP as well, you said it's because of the team that he had around him and the talent that he had around him. So I, I know you're definitely going to agree with Hall this, of man. Famers. Yeah, I, I think at any, with at any one, one yeah, and it was different areas, but at any one given time, I think Ben only had two max mm-hmm. on the roster i'm not even yeah. talking Whether about you're talking like, just Troy, offense. like yeah. one of them might have been on defense yeah troy fanica and right. then as time goes on i mean you get ab in the mix troy harrison but yeah ab wasn't even on the team it Mm-mm. was eh, not like that and harrison wasn't even like hall of fame harrison that one, late that stages was of his on, career yeah. that's really it mm-hmm. that's really it uh but uh bradshaw's comments well i liked <laughs> just the baseline of what he said like stick yeah. with Pickett. like trust me he's a mentally tough kid like hard worker etc mm-hmm. etc all the stuff that he was saying after the rams game i believe when yeah. he went on the fox post game and was like Pickett's my guy man like i'm I'm staking with him like he's not giving you the greatest of stats right now but he's a winner like just trust me the the, the stats will come just he, he's the guy for this team yeah. he's the right player um so i'm i'm with all that uh, in terms of building the team around Pickett, I think he should have been more specific. I think he should have just talked about the outline because I think we have weapons. I, I get what he's going for, though. And I also think he should have mentioned get Pickett a better offensive coordinator, which I think we have. But those would have, I think, been more valid reasons to back up his argument than just saying get him weapons. We got weapons. Yeah, we we do got like weapons. He don't have enough talent around him. You're like, bro, Kenny has weapons. We got weapons. Yeah, he got weapons. Now, were they living up to the best of their ability during Kenny's tenure last season? Like, there's an argument for that, yeah. too. I know we could talk about Canada. We could talk about Pickett and him being up and down. But, I I mean, receivers, Hodge but, was talking about. He's but, like, yeah. these dudes ain't running their routes. But to an extent, this is kind of what brings it back to what we said. It's not always on one person, but no. it does kind of yeah, come back mess. to Kenny. It, it, it was just time, it was, yeah. it was a, the offense was a mess. Like Pat yeah. P said, like, the offense was just stale, and Canada was at the head of it over these last three years, calling the plays, being the coordinator, and something needed to give, yeah. just flat out. Could have picked a play better, could the receivers play better, the sure. Receivers, you would also have to turn around and give them the same amount of praise because, once again, everybody's play in production went up. Kenny was the only one who didn't get a chance to show more because he got hurt. Yeah, at least. But the receivers, like a, yeah, a yeah, full, a the receivers have already point. showed. They're like, hey, bro. Yeah, we nice. It ain't us. The old line, it was like, hey, bro, look, it ain't us. You step in the pocket, bro. You straight. Mason was like, hey, bro, I can cook with this playbook. I ain't tripping on the playbook. So that's the part where it kind of boils back to Kenny. All right, you still gonna have to come out here and show absolutely where you right or where you wrong. You know what I mean? Or where you right or where we wrong? Like that's gonna be it. But yeah, I like this comment stuff. Yeah, um, and in terms of Terry uh, supporting Kenny, I don't hate it. For me, man, as an alumni, you, you got to pick and choose, right? You either take the approach that, you know, you're going to be more of like how I kind of do it where we just, you know, who's available and we're kind of just talking about it, no feelings involved with it. Or you can do the whole, man, I'm really going to endorse this player and I'm going to be real specific about why I'm doing it. And I think for Terry, that's what he's doing with Kenny right now. I don't think it's a negative. I do like it for Kenny because right now, the same thing that Kenny is talking about, I was listening to a Justin Fields interview. We'll talk about that where he was just talking about somebody where it's like, yo, everything just seems so negative around you. You're like, man, I don't want to just see the negative or hear the negative every single time. Like, somebody give me some love. So for a guy like Terry Bradshaw, a Hall of Famer, or a Super Bowl champ, a guy that was drafted here, a guy that has already had success here, coming back and being the guy that's also publicly saying no i do support this dude i do think that if you actually give him some time he could develop into what y'all actually hope he is or want we think that he already can be that just give him some time as a player man that's one of the best feelings ever when you Talk hear a guy Terry like Bradshaw. that that's like 100 percent Brad Trump Ben those are yeah. the two guys you want to hear from here absolutely that's going to make you feel a lot more confident but it's also going to give you more urgency to make sure that you don't let them down Because you know what those dudes are. You know what they mean to football, let alone the Steelers. So when they put their neck out there and say that, man, no, I'm saying that he's good, 
that's a lot. So to an extent, I do feel like for Kenny, he's even more so going to want to prove those dudes right and validate what they're saying because we know those are what we call legends in the NFL. Forget just Pittsburgh. Those are NFL legends. And they don't typically talk like that about dudes, you know, especially if they don't deem them worthy. So that's the part for me where I'm like, for Kenny, that's also a positive check. So I do like that for him, man. And I think some of Bradshaw's past plays into his comments here on Kenny because, yes. as I mentioned, you brought it up. Yep. I, I mentioned, you know, months ago, you guys got to watch this mm-hmm. Terry Bradshaw doc- documentary on YouTube. Dude, it took him like four or five years to get things right. And like the fan base was like so against him. He was getting benched and then it clicked. It Mm -hmm. finally clicked. Now, this is a different time. I'm not saying we give Kenny four or five years, but I think the signs are there. There's definite signs there that he can be the guy. And yeah, I don't want to give up on him like that, especially with him going into a third year and and with him not getting a, a full sample size in over these first two seasons, particularly without Matt Canada. Yeah. He's been banged up, but we, we only got a game and a half. Without him. Yeah, yeah. without Canada, man. And it, it was looking good to me. Mm-hmm. I thought we were going to win that Cardinals game. Until he got hurt, we yeah. had the fourth and one shotgun run with Najee, and that was that mm-hmm. game. That was that was a disaster in and of itself. But, yeah, I think some of his – Bradshaw's past, and, like, that that's the perspective he's coming from. Like, look, I, I was given some time. Yeah, and it worked you out see, for me, Yeah, man. you see how it played out. Yeah. Like maybe he sees some of that same mental toughness or whatever it is that he had that finally got it to click at some point and Kenny Pickett. Yeah. So, yeah, I, li- I like the comments. Um, is that it? I think Tony had one. He says trade DJ for DK. Who says no? Uh, the, the, the amount of money. That, that's who's going to say no, man. Boy, you know how DK going to cost, baby. And you're going to have to draft, get some draft picks up. I don't, yeah, I don't need DK. Yeah, yeah. That ain't apples to apples. Yeah. You think they're just doing that 1v1? Straight up DK for uh, DJ? Would the Steelers do it? No, would the Seahawks do it? I, no, know. I don't think they would do it either. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, out of there. No way they do That's it. That's their pickings. Yeah. It's like they're not doing that. No. Hmm. No. We got our pickings. We, yeah. we got a Deontay to compliment mm-hmm. pickings. All right. All right. I'm not saying DK oh. and pickings couldn't work. Like, I think that could still work. For a fact, that would work, and it would work really well. We would, we would figure out the DJ part. We could figure out the art runner. That definitely works. Yeah. And that, that's that younger. That, I like that more than D-Hop. I mean, when y'all brought up D-Hop, and I was kind of like, ah, because to me, D-Hop is not going to go to another level surpassing Pickens or DJ. DK? DK gives you more DK, over the top of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DK, you, like, yo, you in that convo yeah. still to this day. Like, yeah, we not, this is. Where you're at right DK's now. DK's less of Pickens than right. what Hopkins is. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Where they could still have some type of uh, compliments to each Correct. other. Correct. Where yeah. it's just not all overlapping. Yeah. No, I do like that, though. But he he would definitely cost. Yeah. yeah he costs a lot. I'm good. I'm yeah, he good. costs a lot. All right, what do we got now? All right. So, yeah, now we should be on these uh, quarterback rumors, man. <laughs> uh, what do you want to talk everything. about? Everything. Lord. All right. So, I heard it was a birdie. Can we talk about the birdie first? Right, that was uh, Ocho yeah. on Shannon Sharp's yeah. nightcap. Yeah. Well, we should give a shout out to Shannon Sharp. He's been killing. Come him, on, huh? bro. Shout out to Shannon Sharp. Heck yeah, bro. I know he's on first take. I don't think he's on every day, but is but he he's on? daily though. Yeah, he's is, like. Is one he of on every day? I want to say he's up. Like anytime he's on it, he's on consistently. Stephen A is on. He's been on. Okay. Because typically, when him and Stephen A aren't on, it's because they're traveling and they're at like an event or doing uh, on location somewhere yeah those nightcaps are good yeah. and then uh podcast interviews that he's doing yeah with, he just uh, did one with manzel yeah yeah he did the manzel <laughs> he has the cat uh, the cat williams he also did a um who uh monique as well man so like he's doing some dope stuff man from a media perspective man heck yeah yeah good for him mm-hmm. but yeah it was ocho cinco on the nightcap podcast Steelers were brought up, or quarterback situation was brought up, and he just said uh, a little birdie told me that Russell Wilson wants to go to Pittsburgh. Yeah. Did he like lock it in that he's gonna he sign said in Pittsburgh? A little birdie says Russ. Or he Pittsburgh. just wants to go yeah, there. He, his interest. Nah, he was like, I don't know the exact yeah, verbiage. Little but. birdie was like, Yo, Russ to Pittsburgh is gonna happen. He was like, That's that's what a little birdie told him. It's gonna happen. Russ to Pittsburgh. He was like, Dang. All right. I mean. Well, that still boils down to kind of what we said earlier on. If Russ. What's the number that he's willing to take? Because it only works if Broncos release him, which it does like they will do. So now it's... How bad do you want to be in Pittsburgh? Yeah. And for Pittsburgh, how bad do you want him here? 
right. because it goes hand in hand. It's like we ain't go you're not gonna just come for crumbs, but we also if we don't have to break the bank, we don't have to break the bank. So because there is something that right. comes with Russell Wilson, where you mm-hmm. you might have to just give up a little bit of power. Yeah, right. Because I mean, he is that dude. Like, there's there's a presence that comes Wilson. with Russell Wilson. Yeah, he's like, earned it. Yeah. Do you want that uh, as the Steelers right now? Right. Uh, and I listen. Russell Wilson is a proven guy. He's mm-hmm. he's a winner. He's a Hall of Famer. So. I'm not saying that as like a negative, but it is yeah. something to think about for right. sure. It's especially if you believe in Kenny Pickett that he yeah. can develop into a Russell Wilson like player. Why don't why not just stick with the guy that you have yeah. and build it in house? Well, and that would also go back to the timing part of it too. You know, if you think he could do it within the next year to two years, then yeah. you lean in on it. If you don't, you think it's going to take four or five potentially, then maybe this is how you expedite the team success without you know having to risk that for the Kenny development. The one thing I do uh, like is this. Um, I do know, I'm sure some people get annoyed with the QB talk, you know what I mean, or the different rumors that pop up. But when you think about it, man, you want your team in the place that we're at right now, right, where we have a lot of uncertainty still at the position, it's not a bad thing to be linked to a lot of these quarterbacks because, to me, the same way we looked at hiring an offensive coordinator, right, and we said we don't want to just promote from within. We don't want to just go with the next whatever cheap sign-in. It's like, yo, can we actually interview some people? Can we actually take our time and see what gives us the best option? And we talked about how, oh, a Kingsbury or a Arthur Smith or it's a Gerard Johnson or it's a Ben Johnson. All these different names, the different interviews. We liked it because we're saying, man, we're building up this beautiful list of different caliber coaches, right? Different dudes that are experience medium experience not experience has success failed and came back only has success really young that's the exact same thing we're doing here with quarterback when you think about it Kirk Cousins right in his camp Russell Wilson right we talk about the Justin Fields stuff Mason Rudolph Kenny Pickett the draft it's like yo we should be doing this we should be hearing teams or players saying that hey I talk to the Steelers or the Steelers will link to this team, or the Steelers link to this player, because that's letting us know they're actually doing their due diligence, and they're not just saying, hey, we're happy with Kenny as is, and we don't need to even look anywhere else. You at least want them to be doing some of this due diligence. So for me, I'm kind of liking where we're at with it, and it still doesn't validate or you know, cut away from what else is out there in terms of, okay, well, this guy said that they're linked to that team. That could still very well be true, because right now, everybody's talking you know it's gonna be even more so next we got this combine where you having them gms in the building with them agents and them other teams it's like hey bro what's it gonna take for a kirk hey what's your thoughts on justin right now what you ready to move on caleb just walk by you feel about caleb you seen drake may right what he look like i think that's what you want though man let's see man all right because at the end of the day we want to make sure that whoever we settle on is our best option and that we actually feel confident. It wasn't that we just settled or it was just given to the dude for the sake of being given to him. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I like that. I, I don't think a lot of fans necessarily like that if we still decide Kenny Pickett, though. Yes, I get it. I, I, I like I that. It's it like, it's, it's fine. Because, like, I yeah. think, you know, Kenny has opened the door up and we are just flat out trying to improve our team. So. That's why I think some of these hypotheticals are legitimate. Like, they're valid conversation. There's a reason we're having them. Yeah. But, you know, if a player is talking about potentially wanting to come to the Steelers or just all these links are happening, and, and the Steelers maybe are taking it somewhat mm-hmm. serious and just saying, like, yeah. all right, this guy's available. He's just, like, should yeah. we? And having those conversations behind the scene, I like that. And I even like it more from the standpoint, like, if they do pick Kenny Pickett, it's like they must really believe in him then. Kinda they like, went through that process, thought it all through. It's like, I think Kenny Pickett could be that, so let's just stick with him. But again, I don't think fans in general are going to like that because they're they're going to just think Steelers settled. Yeah, because I look at it like when we they're drafted just, They're Kenny. just being stubborn. Think about when we drafted Kenny. We talked about all the other quarterbacks that were out there. But yeah. when we picked Kenny, it said a couple of things. It's like, yo, they knew that this was their guy. They had the option to get any of these other guys. We did not settle. We did not wait. We went and called our shot. I just think of with some of these other guys. Heck, we talk Russell Wilson, right? 
and everybody is, you know, hung up on the money part of it. How the heck would we know if he's going to take a vet minimum if you never actually pick up the phone and talk to him? Right. So when a report comes out that we have interest in a Russell Wilson, that can literally be that right there. But how could you ever even get that far if you don't even pick up the phone? How do we even know what a potential Kirk Cousins number is if you don't even pick up the phone? We've already said that these players are more proven, but we're just simply saying in the sense of you do want to kind of go through that. But it could still very much come right back to, yo, we think that Kenny is still the best option. And honestly, if that's what they decide at the end of it, cool. But make sure that you at least go through this process like we're doing it right now. And I do like that. Yeah, the thing that sucks about this process versus the offensive coordinator search is we're actually never really going to know what's happening behind the scenes Mm -hmm. where like they'll flat out say Steelers are interviewing this offensive coordinator. We just know who's linked to who and unless it's It's just Chad Johnson saying this or Adam Schefter saying X, Y, Z. Because it goes, it's a touchy thing, man. When you're in free agency, when you're dealing with negotiations, it's very weird. You want leverage, so certain things you want leaked, certain things you don't want leaked. Certain things, just like, yeah, if I'm talking to this team, I don't want you to know you I'm talking to this team. You saw what happened with the Browns yeah. and Watson and right. how Chris Baker got. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a lot of that happens, man. You'll be going to negotiations and having a full-on convo with this team over here. you like, bro, this can't get public, though, because now that's going to make me look bad or it's going to tip my hand to this team or it's going to let that team know that I'm willing to go for this number one. I've told piss, them. It's going to piss uh, off the quarterback. Yeah bro yeah so it's a lot we saw with Lamar Jackson yeah. remember with Lamar a year ago with the whole franchise it was like yo it's more than just let me just call him like you gotta keep some of that hush hush so we're not gonna know Mm-mm. but in terms of are they happening I do feel like these convos man are legitimate and it's also just nice yeah. to hear that Steelers are popping franchise absolutely that means there's interest because there are other we teams can't be that, that old school bro. or that yeah. like behind the times right mm-hmm we still out there in the convo. We in the dance. <laughs> right. Man, they, this is, we ain't the only team that need quarterbacks, bro. We not the only team. So the fact that we getting linked, though. I yeah, like I'm it. sure all yeah. these dudes would pick, like, out of the all whatever right. it is, maybe five all or six right. teams where quarterback conversations are mm-hmm. happening right now. We got to be number one. You got, like, Raiders, Falcons, who the hell Patriots. Knows? Yeah, yeah, they're taking us. That's what I'm saying. They'll probably draft a guy, I'm guessing. The three. Probably. Daniels or. Yeah. Man. But our situation is still, I think, the most stable and the best out of all of them. Absolutely. If you need a quarterback scenario, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so that's it. that's it on Russ. Did we want to talk Fields at all? Any- uh, yeah, man. So um, obviously <laughs> any, with anything, Justin Fields. Uh, any, any more you got on him? My man, they, they hit him with the Deontay Johnson, I heard. They hit him with the social media sweep. Or is it the George Pickens? However you want to go. Either way, you know. But um, basically explained that. What he clinked out all the social media stuff, was unfollowing all the bad stuff like that, NFL accounts, basically to kind of get away from some of the negative energy. But he did want to return to Chicago. He said he still messes with Chicago. Yeah, he said he still messes with him. But he wasn't against playing somewhere else either, though. He just simply was like, yo, he I'm wants to them. know. Yeah. Just give me the answer it's the uncertainty. sooner rather than later. It's the uncertainty. I mean, he might get that answer in a week. New league year start uh, coming up real soon. So, um, yeah, you're going to get that info sooner rather than later. And honestly, at the combine is when this type of stuff typically is done because you got everybody there at the same place, man. Are you gonna be getting some inside scoops? Oh, I'm credentialed, bro. So, so I'm gonna I'm a be, I'm gonna get some convos. I don't know how much. You gonna give us get, some though. reports next week? You know, I got you, bro. Listen, man, they was telling me some of the people we supposed to be interviewing. I'm like, I could talk to the GM. I could talk to the head. Really? Man. Is this gonna be on the Steelers website? Yeah. So, um, oh, so are you gonna right. grill them? So, for everybody that wants to know where you can find the content or can hear it, um. Next week, uh, Tuesday through Friday on uh, Steelers Nation Radio, or if you're local, Fox Sports Pittsburgh, or wherever you get your podcasts at, Steelers Blitz, or uh, Steelers.com. We'll be live every day, me, Wes, um, and uh, Matt Williamson. Um, Yeah, from the Combine Radio Row. Every day talking to different guests. Uh, I know we got Daniel uh, Jeremiah pulling up on us one of them days. Like I said, Omar Khan's going to be on us one of them days. Um, Yeah. I got to go actually look through that email. It's like the whole list of like some of these dudes. So, yeah, man, we're going to have, like I said, some legitimate conversations. All of it is going to be pertaining to drafting, prospects, team as a whole. So, yeah, man, if y'all want some of that content while it's happening live, then, yeah, that's how y'all can check it out, man. Like I said, man, 9 to uh, 12, I think Eastern Standard Time. I got to see. I feel like 
Indianapolis is an hour behind, maybe? I got to check it that is. part. I think it is. Yeah, I think it's an hour so behind. I went to the Notre Dame <laughs> yeah. game last year. Did. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I think, they're, they're, I think that's the only thing, but... As a whole, though, man, yeah, y'all be to check. And then they also have, like, the uh, the replay versions of it as well, man. So, like I said, Steelers.com, um, Fox Sports Pittsburgh, or uh, the Steelers Nation Radio app, or wherever you get your podcast at, man. Steelers Blitz. Yeah, can't go wrong with that, baby. But that's where you'll be to get that. So, yeah, man, any of that info, any of the convos, man, if we get any snap, man, heck yeah, bro. You already know I'm tapping in. Breaking reports Come on, from bro. Much. Come on. I was like, all right, man, if I got it every night, man, I'll get back to the room, man. Shh. Let me tap in real quick. Let me get, get the congregation something real quick, man. And then, obviously, we're going to try to get us an episode in while I'm gone as well, man. I just don't like my schedule. I've never been as a media dude. I've only been on the player side, and it's the most chaotic, just no free time around the clock type ordeal. So, we're going to see what it looked like this go around. But either way, yeah, I'm going to have plenty to give y'all info, though, man. Plenty of info. Might even give y'all some vlogging action, too, man. I got a vlog oh, yeah. dropping from An- from Anguilla. All right. That's dropping soon. Show a little bit of the vacay. But I think I'm going to drop some behind the scenes from over there, too, man. Absolutely. Yeah. So it'll be a good time, man. Definitely be a good time. Uh, that, that's my that's my buttoned up side, though. I could be, like I said. Sure. When they were sending hair shots, D, it's like, yo, take your glasses off, no hat on. I'm like, bro, I'm on vacay. I was supposed to say, like, that. I was trying to have the bucket hat, you know? Looked cool guy in the credential picture. He was like, nah. We ain't going for that. So I got to be a little bit more, you know, up the up. Yeah, yeah, maybe one of these days the Mets and Deke podcast is out uh-huh. there on radio. Why not? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Why not? Uh, with Fields, though, I feel, like, I feel like he's done in Chicago. It felt that way. Like, if you just don't want to see it Chicago stuff or see yeah. NFL stuff, just delete the app. Right, not delete the app specifically or unfollow, deactivate your account, yep. something like that. Yep. Yeah, you went out of your way to unfollow. And here's the other thing too: the Bears yes. aren't talking about Fields versus Williams uh, or what are they doing with the number the one overall pick. Is. Yeah, yeah, the NFL yeah. is, but yeah, the Bears are just put going to be putting out cookie yeah. cutter like PC type of uh-huh. content. They're not. They're, they're not talk about, building into the drama. Hey, the top five. It's more of the Chicago the blogs the and stuff. The Chicago the Bears backs. fan accounts that yeah. are doing that. Yep. So yeah, I think maybe he just realizes, yeah, yeah, I'm done. Or or is he trying to send a message to the Bears and say, like, hey, look, can you let me know what's happening here? I think both things could be true. I think to an extent he is frustrated with it because this is probably the first time in his life, man, from a playing standpoint, that there's a debate about if he's good enough. Oh, sure, yeah. This cat went to Ohio State and was he went the to Georgia man. first. Right? Oh, excuse me, went to Georgia first. So that means he was the man coming out of high school. Then from Georgia goes to Ohio State, becomes the man even more so there. Top pick, man in the draft. Chicago, you the man the first couple of years. They firing coaches and saying there's everybody else but you. And now the debate is are you good enough to be here going forward? So, to an extent, I'm sure his pride is hurt. I'm sure that ego taking a little bit of a hit. And you pissed off because when you open up that app, you know the algorithm is going to do what it's supposed to do. It's going to feed you all that nonsense. And for him, yeah, you and your feelings about it. So, you react. He's younger. And we got to understand that, too. Younger players react differently than the older guys back then. So, for him, his immediate response is, I'm pissed off. NFL, you get nothing follow, but you know what? F the Bears, too. But it's all good until now I'm on camera and I'm getting asked about it. And now I really have to give you an answer. So my answer is, yeah. Play it off I need good. to see it all. Play yeah. it off very I good. I wanted it all to be gone. But like you said, D, the Bears' account is not about to be putting up there that type of stuff. That'd be no different than Pittsburgh. You don't think the Steelers' main account, they ain't saying anything quarterback related or anything negative quarterback related. That's every account but the team's account. Yeah. They ain't doing that because that's the investment. That's the asset. If anything, they're going to drop a highlight tape. Hey man, oh Kenny Pickett throws over twenty yards. Right. Like they'll do that before they they holler about somebody else. But he's young, he's in his feelings, and it happens. That's the the tough part. We talk about business versus taking it personal. He's taking it personal. Use his motivation, but at the same time, understand that this is business, and you did open the door with your inconsistent play. So you can't make it a oh y'all are saying f me. When essentially you said F them with your inconsistent play after they took you in the first round. They drafted you so they wouldn't have to talk about quarterbacks for the next 10 years. Not on purpose, but. <laughs> but either way, but but yeah. in terms of just the, when we get down to the nut and bolts of it, it's like, 
is cause and effect. They took you in the first because they thought you were going to come here and do this and this from here on out. And we have everything set. You're rocky to start for whatever the variables are. So with that being the case, now they got to come back and have this conversation again. He just ain't ready for that convo. He's in his feelings about it. And rightfully so, but that's the NFL. I mean, it really just comes down to the Bears having the number one overall pick. If they hadn't fleeced right. the Bears last year, then, then it's a different they combo. probably are sticking with yeah. fields. Even if that pan- – let's say the Panthers, they still make the trade, but the Panthers totally are a little combo. bit better and the Bears are picking right. like at 10 or 11. It's a totally different combo. They're probably still sticking with fields. But when you're picking – It's just the worst, you're worst case scenario overall happened. overall with Caleb Williams coming out, who they're saying, okay, if not Caleb, then it's Drake. But one of these dudes got to be the guy. That's a tough one, and especially when you're sitting here like, okay, this is the they decision. They get to reset the rookie contract yeah. and all that this, stuff. This, 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 this is the one right here, man. How are we going to react to this one? And you can still get something for mm-hmm. fields. Man. It's not like it's a complete wasted asset. You, you're probably going to get a decent man. draft pick. Because I'm sure if you're Chicago, you're like, bro, Fields is good. He still has talent. Like, it's a lot of un- like realized potential with him that has everything that you would want if he was coming out in this year's class. And that's kind of how you do the argument with yourself. If you're the bears, if he was coming out right now, do we like him more than these players right here? Where are we having rated at? All right. Now we have him rated higher than this guy. Okay. Now when we factor in what it would cost or what we're potentially going to have to pay him in the next year versus what we're going to pay this guy. Does it also, is it still worth that? And that's why the convos are what they are. Because you can make a legitimate case that having to bump up to the 25 mil, that's going to be, you know, the fifth year option for Justin Fields. He's not $25 million better than Kayla Williams or Drake May. And if that's truly how you feel, then you go ahead and bring in a Drake May or a Kayla Williams. But if you feel like he can and he will be long term and in this interim, then, yeah, you go ahead and keep him. You stick with the 25 and you say, all right, we'll make it work. But that's a tough decision because somebody will get fired if you're wrong. Somebody definitely gonna get fired if you're wrong. That's a fact. Yeah, because now you was wrong twice. Yeah, I was gonna say. That the, even aside from that, the Steeler connections and rumors haven't stopped at all. That it seems like one happens every day or two at this point. Well, the the uh, one was from Dulac. We yeah, mentioned him earlier. Yeah, Dulac. That's what I'm where, like, bro. He uh, said he about Justin Fields, man. Tomlin's yes. interest in Fields back when he was getting drafted, and you know why I'm here. Yeah, yeah, basically, if the Steelers had a legitimate chance at Fields at the time, they would have went and got him. Them. Yes. Was that the Najee draft? Yes. I, that yeah yeah it was Najee that year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, that, I think that would have been Hold that, that, that would have been a bad pick either way. I wouldn't have liked that. That was the Najee year, right? It was. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I think so. I wouldn't have liked that pick though at the time. Definitely wouldn't have. No, you would have because you think about no, it. Seven would have been his last year. No, no, yeah, that's no. Because I was, I was calling for seven to get two you more. You were hollering that. They had already said it was just, his last go around, though. No, no, I we thought, didn't know that. I thought we did kind of know that. No, nah, we we because even like midway through the season, remember, my like bad. my bad. We we started like winning games. You had like the Chargers game, the Vikings game, yeah. and it was like, all right, is Ben Ben potentially coming back here? And then it, it really hit, it was like the Browns game, like that final like week or two Browns game. You had the yeah, like this is it. Okay. Unless you knew something like that we don't didn't put know, that like, on me. Don't scenes. put that on me. Don't put that on me. I just thought that that's what if, that, I, if that's the case. Don't I feel put betrayed. that on me. Don't put that on me. Don't put that on me. I'm an innocent Boston. I don't know nothing. I just <laughs> thought that that was one of the things. Where it was kind of like all right. Well, I wouldn't have been happy either way. Dead. I wouldn't have been happy. But Jerry do like did dropped the report though so he did say that yeah, yeah. yeah so just in the sense though um i do feel like and that was kind of you know why i was even talking when we were bringing him up today it's like whether it's the little birdie element with chad johnson and the reason why i say the whole little birdie element and the way that he veined it is because when you think about chad chad is a dude that is an nfl guy that is connected with a lot of nfl people so to act as if he could not be a part of a conversation to not hear that conversation or not have that leak to him specifically because he's a media dude also in this vein, that's the part where it's like, let's not be naive either. So when I say it could be very legitimate that if he did hear something like that, it's for a reason. The same way we talk Jerry Dulac, right? Jerry is not employed by the Pittsburgh Steelers as a coach or reporter, right? It's third parties separate, but it's like, yo, he's connected. He's in some of them rooms. He hears some of them same things. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, you know what you know, yeah, you know what you know. Mm-hmm. 
similar concept. So I do think it's legitimate, but that is also, like I said, man, why I was just more so acknowledging the fact of just as a whole, I do like what we're hearing because these aren't bum names. These are legitimate names. These are legitimate pieces in terms of if we're trying to figure out what's going to make our quarterback room better. These are the type of names you want to be having these conversations with. Now, what it turns into, we'll see. But at least we know our mindset, we seem to be in the right direction right now. I think just at the lowest level, no matter what, there's legitimate interest from a Kurt Cousins, a Justin Fields, Mm -hmm. or a Russell Wilson to come to Pittsburgh. I think where Which is also good to know, yeah. I think where it's still a little murky is just what exactly the Steelers' interest is in any of those players like right now at this point. Right. Because even if Tomlin did have the interest back in the day, we also did draft Kenny Pickett. Correct. And then we haven't really heard much from Steelers' side or any mm-hmm. any much linking from like Steelers reporters to like a Wilson or Cousins. It's more you stuff coming out right of those now. guys' camp. Yeah, you can't right now. You can't do it right now. So, it's, yeah, it's just murky, gray. But, mm-hmm. yeah, to your point, just, just having the conversation of us – yeah. going through it all and saying, like, all right, are we sure on this guy? What exactly do we want to do? Yeah. Taking it serious, just like we did the, the mm-hmm. coordinator stuff. And like I said, I would just also just reiterate, man, or reiterate, look for convos to pick up a little bit more next week. Some of them links, some of them rumors, some of those, hey, I'm hearing such and such is linked to this. This is where you're going to get even more of that type of stuff. A lot man. of linking. Because you're going to have the Kirk Cousins camp there. You're going to have a Justin Fields camp. Are you going to go out to dinner with him? <laughs> Shut up, man. Don't do me like that, bro. Don't do me like that. I, I heard you might bump into somebody, so you never know. All right? If you see the astronaut man just bumping down to somebody, you never Mets know. Mets is going to be right? pitching cousins on comedy. I'd be like, yo, Kirk, bro, come and talk to me, man. Kirk, Kirk. Hey, it's I'm, on me. Let, let me treat you. You're going to have to take the knife out of my back. Let, when, let me, let me treat you, you to back. dinner. Let me treat you to dinner, Kirk. All right? Come here, Kirk. Let me talk to you real quick. How's that Achilles doing? You need to elevate that? All right, I got you, baby. Okay, what size you were? I like your jersey size. Yeah, that number's available. I like uh, your number. Come on, dude. <laughs> that Damn. Available. Well, didn't he wear uh, twelve in Washington? He went to Washington. That's not available. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, it's not available. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, it could be available. It could, it could make it work. We could make it work. That's how much you like that number. What are you tripping Man. on? <laughs> That hurts. Yeah, I don't know what you're going to be doing up there. That's going to be just, murky, too. <laughs> Recruit it. Right, look, Damn. man, come to Pittsburgh, bro. You don't, bro, you ain't trying to go to Seattle, man. You ain't trying to go out there, but you might as well come to Pittsburgh, bro. You ain't trying to join Coach T? Come on, man. You know what we talk about, baby. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm recruiting. I'm telling you now, dude. I'm recruiting. Any of them college prizes. Hey, look, man, if the draft work how you want to work, man, just remember, you can always come back to Pittsburgh, bro. All right? Free agency work. Draft at work, but find a way back there, okay? Just all roads lead back there. Uh, that sounds more wholesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Um, I think that was the main stuff right there, man. Just the, uh, like I said, Jerry Dulac with Justin Fields and then uh, Russ Ocho Cinco link. Other than that, everything else we're pretty much on the same with right now. Obviously, we saw the one mock had uh, Drake or had uh, Bo Nix. But other than they're just doing it for yeah, clicks at this point, right? I'm like, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's like, and that's in the first round on top of that. But, um, yeah, man, someone had us trading up for JJ McCarthy. I just saw that. Come on, yeah. Well, you know, it's mock draft season, and once again, man, mock draft, mock draft. All right, we use the PFF simulator, that's what we've used in the past. All right, so that's what we're probably gonna be rolling with again, okay? But send your mock drafts in moatswinners at gmail.com. All right, when we get back from the combine, we will definitely be talking about a lot more of that type of stuff, man. So start sending them in now. I'll start looking at some of those uh mocks and we'll get them things rolling. And we also remember, um, we started doing this a year ago too. We would feature some of the mock drafts on the website, arthurmotes.com. So, like I said, man, if we like your mock and we vibing with it, man, you might get featured up there on the uh website as well man so check that out in your spare time also and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so just yet tony daniel second uh wait i already read that uh i already read a bunch of these hold on let yeah me, we should just be like yeah, yeah. i think get... we're at uh michael brooks yeah let me see let me see real quick where's he at yeah, Michael yep. Brooks. What, what if, if this yeah. season Pickens is 100% back from the ACL? Oh, that's scary. That's definitely scary, but I'll be all for it. And it wouldn't. It's a fair point. Know, yeah, well, I, I think technically it would have been last, last year, right? Yeah. That would have been two years removed. Yeah. 
Which he had a really good year. Yeah. That, was, that was a Pro Bowl season. And he definitely got hotter towards the end of it as well. Kel Turner, we can't wait on Kenny to develop and waste TJ LFG. Well, and that's the debate, right? How long is it going to take for him to develop? If they think he can do it within this season, then we're going to see them not be as aggressive with some of these quarterbacks. If they think it's going to take, you know, three, maybe four years for it to develop, you might see a different level of aggression and urgency in free agency right now. That's the thing for me. As much as people want to talk about Fields coming in here and developing and all this stuff that, you know, the Bears did him wrong, like there's still potential there. Like, Why isn't the same said about Kenny Pickett? So I think to me, man, because I've thought about that too, I just think because of number one, the age, but number two, how they were both perceived coming out. Kenny was perceived as a high floor, low ceiling, very proven pro ready, won't take long to develop to that stage. Whereas Fields, it was, bro, you are dripping with elite talent, but we still got to see, can it be buttoned up and do what it's supposed to do? What's crazy is I thought Fields was a very buttoned up quarterback coming in. I yeah. thought he was going to be way more and less legs. Passer. Yeah, less yeah. legs. But he's definitely shown to be a little bit more erratic in the pocket versus being more of the proven passer and being a lot more of an elite runner of the football than we, I think both of us anticipated. <clears throat> and then for Kenny, his whole thing was, man, you're supposed to already come in here and be not starter level, but it's like, yo, your floor was supposed to be higher than any of these other guys. And that's part of this stuff where we're like, well, why are we hollering about can you develop and do some of the routine things when we thought you should be coming in with that type of stuff already buttoned up? So I do think that's part of the issue. Yeah, it was a Kenny tough being year an older prospect, Justin Fields still younger than Kenny and has a lot of that same juicy town stuff that you want. I think that's why they're a little bit more open to Justin Fields, and he's new. If we would have been seeing Justin Fields since his rookie year going through the growing pains and the lessons that he's been learning in Chicago, it might be a different perspective. We've just had a chance yeah. to see Kenny every single day. We've seen his success, but we've also seen and emotionally felt his failures. We have zero emotional attachments to Justin Fields' failures, so that's why a lot of them failures don't hit the same to us. Yeah, that's that's, that's my point. Is. Like, why yeah. is and it's not even like either could develop or not develop. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think the slate is there for both of them. I'll I'll give Fields the upside. Yeah. Sure, we we could see that that like that type of talent and stuff. But I, I mean, talent isn't the be all end all. We can yeah. talk about Jake Locker and his mm -hmm. town, or Jamarcus Russell his town, Zach Very Wilson true, his town. Very I guess true. that doesn't necessarily make you a great quarterback or mm -hmm. is going to guarantee you to develop. I just Very true. I think my question is like, why is it such a locked in scenario where Fields comes here and oh, yeah. he's going to reach his potential, whereas yeah. Kenny can't reach it either. Yeah, that's. Like that's said, that's my mm -hmm. like can't can we agree dudes, on that yeah. like can't both we just say can definitely do it can we yeah. say the both for both of those guys yeah. like the same thing for both of those mm -hmm. guys but i get it you, you, you might like fields like because it. of the upside a little yep. bit more but again upside ne doesn't necessarily make a good quarterback or a great yeah. quarterback very true that's that's all i'm saying I, I don't know why we're not giving kenny any benefit of the doubt yeah like it doesn't seem like he's getting much at all mm. but like zero when when you've been a part of the guy's failures we know people are typically like they lean more negative than positive. So they're going to remember more of his shortcomings than they remember his best moments. Heck, when we talk Mason Rudolph, it really took this four games of him consistently playing well to have people change their narrative when we've already seen recent times where he's already played well. But because of the fact that we saw more negative from him, we always default to what he did bad versus what he's done good. And I don't know why we like that. That's just how we are. So I think for Kenny, because we've watched him do well and not do well, they hold on to some of that a lot harder or a lot longer than they would at Justin Fields. They're looking at Justin and saying, bro, I just see talent. I see highlights. I see when he makes a great play. His great plays look like they outweigh his bad plays. Whereas for us, we don't have the crazy, you know, TikTok highlight videos for Kenny to the same extent as a Justin Fields. So... If both quarterbacks are equal, as we're saying, or at the same space right now, one at least is giving me the highlights, whereas the other guy, he's not giving me any of that. It's just, all right, we won the game, and we're going to try to say that he played well at this particular junction of it. I think that's also why they react and how they're reacting to it. 
But both things can be true also. Just because they don't have all the information on Justin Fields doesn't mean Justin Fields is better. It just means they're not as informed on what he struggles with. But for us, we are more in tune with it because this is what we do. We talk about him. So we go and look at him. We're like, okay, we see. He does do this really, really well. But yeah, he tripping with this right here. Same way we know with Kenny. Yeah, they're casuals. Kel Turner. Mike T praises mobile QBs but doesn't want one. Why? (laughs) I don't think he doesn't want one. I just don't think it's been the right one for him just yet. Yeah. He said seven for as long as he had him. So while seven was here, which mobile quarterback were you going to move on from seven for? And since then, the only other mobile guy that he really had a debate about was Malik Willis versus Kenny Pickett in the draft. Here's and my thing, too. Kenny. From my standpoint, Kenny is mobile, or at least was. He stopped being mobile this year. Yeah. Like, he was mobile <laughs> his rookie year. Didn't he, bro, get, didn't he pick up like slide, 350 yeah. on the ground? He was also Mr. Fake like Slide, bro. Games? Heck yeah. Like he he was like a, it's not to the degree of Justin Fields, but yeah. a guy that probably could at least pick up like four or five hundred yards a yeah. season rushing. Mm-hmm. He did none of that last year. None of that. Yeah. Was he banged up? I don't know. Let's get you dub. South Carolina has announced that Manchester United will play Liverpool at Williams Bryce Stadium. Oh, August third, nice. part of a preseason tour for the clubs. All right, Why that's that? gonna be dope. In terms of soccer, bro. Yeah, man, you was like big time, big time in Liverpool as well, Where's, man. What stadium is that? That's a uh, Gamecocks. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. South Carolina. Mm-hmm. That's what I was like, yo, that's actually dope. Um, oh, South Carolina has Yeah, announced. yeah, okay. I read it but didn't register in my head. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, man, you and Liverpool, like those like stamp franchises in terms of like or stamp like football clubs and stuff. So, yeah. Let's go. You dub the NFL and four teams today that the 2024 salary cap will be 255.4 million, mm-hmm. a, 30 a 30 million piece. increase from mm-hmm. last year. Mm hmm. Wow. You know, I don't believe in the salary cap. Ever since I retired, I started looking into it. So we're already good then. Yeah. Because I think we were a little bit over, but now, the, now we don't got to worry about after it. After they came out, the, out of left field with the one year five year avoidable deal contracts where you uh, get 20 stuff, mil yeah. but it doesn't count against the cap and we could just void out the rest of your deal and we was like i've never in my life heard of these type of contracts and i was with drew rosenhouse deke i've never this is just outlandish this once that started happening deke i said yeah y'all making stuff up so anybody that we want to get deke we can go get them Okay, if we want to go get a guy, we can go get a guy. That I believe that is cool. for this year, for sure. If I we want that. a guy, we can get a guy. I don't think there's anybody off the table for us in terms of free agency, man. I don't think there is. I agree with you on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the yeah the question is how much does it leverage our future right. future cap and stuff. But I think True. for this year, we could probably make anything happen. Yeah. It's Omar Khan, and we got more cap space now. So. Absolutely. And Richard Arbizo, that uh, you are actually very correct. Uh, I am rocking with Liverpool because of LeBron James. That is that is very accurate. Go Red, go! Wow. So do we get fifteen million on Patrick Queen then? Those are the combos. Yeah. Because you can literally spend big on quarterback, or you can spend big on linebacker. You can spend big on offensive line. You can spend big on corner. Yeah, that probably uh, that that so cap increase say, only helps yeah. Kirk Cousins probably. So when we say Legarius Sneed, when we talk of Jalen Johnson, we talk of Patrick Quinn, when we say potentially a Kirk Cousins, these are all the type of dudes where if we're willing to break the Russell Wilson, right? Granted, we don't think he's going to ever sign for a vet minimum, but it's like you're still going to need to have something that you can play with, some type of cash to come to the game with. That's these type of things. But I I feel like, yeah, any of them dudes, like if they deem that that's the best move, yeah, I don't think I'd be surprised, man, because they got the assets for a fact. Lifted ones, did y'all see AB say he's suing himself? They say for like 10 mil, something like that. Was it for 10? I need to unfollow him. No, he said it was like for 10 mil, though. I didn't see why, though. That was my only thing. Yeah. I didn't see why he was suing himself. Did he not pay him so? What happened? <laughs> Probably. I'm just going over All right. I think he's I think he's blaming his alter ego for his problems. Ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. <laughs> he's Ain't not taking any that. accountability. <laughs> hey, look, there, there's nothing wrong with that, all right? If if you feel like AB is the, the cause for AB being in AB situation, well, you know what? You could be right, AB. Or AB being the cause for Antonio Brown's issues. Yeah, yeah however you want to talk it, man. <laughs> whether it was Mr. Big Chess or whether it was Ronald Ocean, all right? Whichever one of them it was. Or was it Hemothy? I don't know. But whoever it was, hey, man, you know what? Point the finger at them. I ain't tripping on it. I support it. 
Yeah, I ain't gonna like it, but I'm a ghost follow you. Yeah, I ghost follow AB. Yeah. Philip Hopkins, same much and Deke. What do you think about bringing in Devin White and trying to get Terrell Evans back? Sure, yeah, love both of them. Um, I mean, Devin White's the cheaper version of Patrick Queen. I think this go around, uh, still gonna cost though, but I definitely like him. I like him a lot. Liked him when he draft when he got came on the draft. And then when Deke said we drafted the wrong Bush or drafted the wrong Devin, I remember, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, it White happens. went top five, so he wasn't even available yeah, for us. But it happens. We traded up for Devin Bush, man. Like, that's that hurts. Uh, it comes with it, though. It comes with it. We ain't tripping. It comes with it. We live and we learn. So, yeah, I'm all for Devin White, man, spending the block and going to get him. And, of course, why wouldn't we want Edmonds back, man? That's just, uh, or that is a cheaper solution to – a small problem that we have just with the safety position this past year in terms of availability and consistent tackling. Yeah, I, I, I'm not against that. Uh, Tony Daniels second asks, most Kenny Moore or Sneed? Mm. I think you got to go Sneed. I'm Sneed still. I'm still Sneed, man. Moore's going to be less, but yeah. he plays a more niche position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get an outside corner. Like that's, yep. Yeah, if, yeah, I, I just, I, I would pay. I'd prefer paying the money for Snead then. That's yeah, my thing. Just mm -hmm. and knowing how we've been operating in the slot anyway over these last yeah. couple of years, we've been plugging and playing these vet minimum guys. Honestly, like if I'm spinning on a corner, I'm, I'm, I want either Snead or Johnson. Yeah, that's that's where I'm that's kind of like where I'm hyper focused on. And then for inside linebacker, Patrick Queen, option one, Devin White, I like as a potential option two without you know really diving into the rest of that list, but. That's kind of like my short list. I'm like LeJarius Need, Jalen Johnson, Patrick Queen. Kind of in that order, too. Let's go. You dub says we should be sitting around $7 million in cap space now. And that's before you any any restructures, man. We haven't restructured anything. Additional we cuts. We haven't extended anything, haven't cut anything extra just yet. And they said the Allen Robinson thing still isn't even done yet. And that's going to clear up some more uh, space as well. Yep. So we like i said we're in a great position financially we can make moves but this is the the byproduct of not having the quarterback being paid just yet when you don't have the quarterback on that hundred million dollar deal you got the versatility to do some of this stuff now that changes if you go and get kirk if you go and get russ but right now they're in a position where you know if they believe that kenny's still the answer eh, spend that money elsewhere if you think that we got to upgrade it well you got some options here as well through free agency that you can go spend some money on. That's it. I like it. I wonder of those guys, though, free agency-wise, if any of those dudes are franchise tag guys. Yeah, some people are bringing yeah. up in the chat, I'm seeing. That's the only thing I was thinking about. Because I was like, I don't think Sneed, no, but... It... Yeah, I could see it. Yeah. I could see either, or if the Chiefs somehow have cap space. I don't see how they would have a to do that yeah but they're one of those teams he would be i don't one know of them it's ones. just somehow they'll make yeah. it happen i bet well it, it, i feel like every year it's, it's a random dude getting paid and they giving chris jones another deal i yeah. feel like he's the next one up yeah just magically gets another check I'm like, how, how does that happen yeah. yeah all right you got anything else nah man shoot this has been a vibe bro it's one one fifteen. Oh, did we work today bro we gave we gave some content today give me, give me, we gave some content today bro it's like a vibe right there yeah so, uh, yeah, um, I think that's that's good for the day, man. I'm vibed out. You vibed out. You know, what I already told you is wifey driving the day. So, yeah, I got I got work to do. Yeah. But um, other than that, man, shoot. I think everything is a vibe. So with that being the case, man, y'all stay safe out there like we always tell you. Enjoy your weekend. All right, hit that like button one more time on the way out of this thing. And don't forget to subscribe. We said, talked about some of the giveaways and all the other stuff that's going on, man. Definitely tap in, support whatever y'all want to support. But either way, you know we appreciate you for tuning in. And until next time, baby. Peace. peace.